Hey, welcome to the Gig Life Podcast. I'm your host, Stevie Taylor. I just wanted to take a wee bit of time to reflect here on what is 150 episodes of the Gig Life Podcast. When I first started this podcast in 2018, I had no idea what I was getting into, apart from the fact that I wanted to spend time talking to and getting to know some of my favourite local musicians. Um, I remember vividly walking up Steve Marin's driveway on Friday, September 21st, 2018, with my Zoom H4N recorder in my hand and thinking to myself, I have no idea what's going to happen here, apart from the fact that I knew I wanted to spend time with Steve chatting about his career and what made him tick. We had an awesome afternoon over coffee, talking drums, music, and a few laughs, and this became episode number one of the Gig Life Podcast. Well, here we are, October 2024 and episode 150. I am grateful and privileged to have had the opportunity to sit down and chat with so many of my heroes, musicians that have piqued my interest, that have inspired me, that have made me curious, that have made me dance, that have made me bop my head and made me groove. And the other cool thing about all of this is that you dig it too, so thank you. My guest today, well, this is something a bit different. The Company is a band that I've been a part of since 2011. Um, The history of the band goes back much earlier than that. We are five Kiwis based in Australia that wrote and played some pretty awesome music. We came close to hitting the mark of success together but fell a bit short. But through all that, we remain close. Um, We're brothers... Um, and the music that we made, it's magic to us, and it's there for you guys forever. So listen to us dissect where we are from, what we did, how we did it, and where we are now. So this is episode 150, The Company, Here We Go Pro. I think we're rolling. The Company, as I explained in the intro, this is a podcast about The Company, which is a band um, that I've been in for a while uh, with four of my brothers. And anytime we hang out, uh, we always have a good laugh and and talk a whole lot of shit. But we also made some really, really good music too. And um, the door's not closed on that either, I don't believe. Quick intro. So we've got Ronnie Lavender, Josh Gage, Jenna Hawkins, and who are Ratapu? So, boys, welcome to the podcast, and um, it's good to just be here hanging out on a Sunday and and uh, going to talk some shit with you guys. So, what's going on? Yeah, well, since, since I'm the leader of the uh, group, bro, I oh. think it's probably <laughs> here. Um, so it be... here we go. So, why did you wave, Ronnie? Why did you wave? We're on a podcast, bro. <laughs> Nobody can see you waving. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Stevie. No, you're right. Thanks for having us, Stevie. Thanks for having us. Thank, yeah, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Too easy, boy. So where, where is he one at the moment? Where is at? We're in my house, bro, me and Jeans. Yep. We're here. We're in uh, Gold Coast, yep. Queensland. Good I'm at home, uh, St. Clair, Sydney. I'm at home in Northmead. Uh, Josh, where are you? You at home? Oh, in front of all your gear? You got all your gear? <laughs> I'm on the side of the road. Oh, there we go. I'm on the side of the road somewhere. Um... In the mountains, um, because because you know how you guys changed the date and the time of when we were doing the podcast, but didn't tell me. That's basically what happened throughout our whole music career as well. Like oh. no one ever told me what was going on. Never let me play any instruments, you know. So yeah, nothing's changed. <clears throat> but I, I live in Bathurst, New South Wales. Yeah. What what will happen a little bit later is we'll we'll talk about how many times we've all like left the band and stuff. And um, <laughs> and um, Rondo made a comment the other day about like um, at least I didn't leave the band, and then but then I had to kind of remind him that he'd left the state. He got scared in New South Wales and he left. Yeah, well, you know, I, I stayed in the band. I even got a shirt. Everyone can't yeah. see it. You know, I'm the only one that got one. Yeah, have you watched that or? 
No, it's never been washed by. Same one as that like Zoom, Zoom meeting we had like two years ago. The lettering, the lettering is way bigger around the waist. <laughs> <laughs> the lettering is <laughs> way bigger. <laughs> oh, oh, funny. So, yeah, like I sort of said at the start, that this every now and then this might kind of get away, away from us a little bit, um, but I'll try and draw it back to the main sort of point that we're here is, it, is to, you know, tell everybody a little bit of history about the band and um, for the people that don't know, introduce you to some of our music that we've – we've made and um could potentially make in the future and we'll probably talk about the uh 600 songs that we half recorded but could never finish and uh yeah we'll talk about some gigs that we've done and some experiences and you know we've we've had a few travel experiences together which is you know some of the best times i've ever had in the band so um so what I what I might do first is yeah let's talk about how it all how it all began for the company and and explain um, explain the name of the band, uh, you know, particularly the spelling of it and uh, how that came about. And so I'll, I'll hand that over to Rondo. You you kick it off, man, and, and you and Rondo, uh, you and Josh, sorry, can um, talk about those early early days and the makeup of the band. Well, it's spelt like this because Josh can't spell. <laughs> no. we'll, but we'll, we'll we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to his schooling. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably st- I'll start with this, bro. Um, and then I pass it on to Josh because so we've known each other for years, Ye- years before we moved to Aussie. Uh, we've, we've, you know, we pretty much you could probably say we, we more or less grew up together. My family knows his family, my cousins are his cousins, everything. And we sort of bumped into each other again at uni. <clears throat> all our mates become mates. We're all musicians at uni, bro. Um, I'll make this part small because th- this could go for a while, but I'll try and I'll, I'll bring it up to speed pretty quick. Uh, so we did a bit of music. I left. Josh stayed in Hamilton, and he continued to do music with my bros that I was doing music with. So we all knew each other. We're all really close. I I come over to Oz. I think I might have come over before Josh. And then um, I'll let Josh take over this part, bro. I'll I'll fast forward right up to the comp. The the C company is um. Am I right, Josh? You were on a phone call with someone, bro, and you overheard my voice. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, I was on a phone call with uh, was my flatmate that I'd moved over here with, and I heard. Ronnie's voice, and um, I said to my bro that I was living with, I said, bro, I know that guy, and he was like, oh, Josh, you think you know everyone? I said, no, no, honestly, I know that voice, bro. Is his name, is his name Ronald Lavender, bro? <laughs> Ronald? <laughs> yeah, he was like, he goes, yeah, bro, it is, and then I heard, I jumped on, and I was talking to Ronnie, and Ronnie thought I was someone else, he actually didn't even remember my voice, which is... Uh, a little bit sad, uh, given we were so close. Uh, and he didn't, rem- he didn't remember my voice at all. He he totally thought he was talking to someone totally different until he visibly met me again. I said, oh, let's meet up for a drink, or I think we went out for dinner. We'll meet up, bro, we'll, go and we'll catch up. And then when I saw him, he was like, oh, I thought you were another Josh. I'm like, oh, well, that's, that's so bad, bro, because I, so, I was so heartfelt that, you know, fate and God had brought us together for that moment. Uh, but it was... Yeah, no, not to be. But anyway, that's how. Um, yeah, and then I said to Ronnie, "I'm still, I'm still doing music." And Ronnie said, "Oh, yeah, he's still doing music as well." And rem- remember, bro, I showed you one of my uh, one of my demo tapes, and um, yeah, yeah, I said, "What, what do you think, bro?" And he was like, "Oh, n- no comment." <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> hey, hang on, hang on. And he was hey, like, was it, oh, sorry, sorry, Josh, sorry. was he was he playing any instruments? Rondo, was it just a cappella? No, it was just a just a vacuum cleaner head and uh, a cappella bro. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Josh. Oh, you know, I played the stereo. Uh, no, it was a, yeah. you know, you know, I played a couple of instruments in my time, boys. Let's let's not let's not go there. But um, no, I, I showed him a demo tape that I had, and yeah, Ronnie was like, uh, yeah, no comment. And I think he said, um, bro, I think you've been here too long, like way too long, like in Australia, because you don't even sound. Like you're from these, like you're you're biting a bit, bro. Biting back in the day meant like you're like faking it, I think. And um, yeah, so I was like, well, you know, stuff you. Uh, I'm gonna go out on my own anyway. But anyway, that's how we started. And then um, Rondo said, oh, he's got some, he's got some equipment set up at his place. So we'll just we'll go up to his place and we'll just um, yeah, and we sort of bloom from there. And um, that's when we just started making tracks together. I do I do remember too. Um... The reason I kind of I remember getting back into it because you had a 
we'll get into this. We'll get into this a bit further. But remember that, those contacts in Melbourne, bro? And you, they sent you a, a, a instrumental. I just got the feeling yeah. something's yeah. going on. Yeah. Remember that one? Remember that one? Yeah. yeah. Bro. yeah. Josh oh, actually yeah. had, I think he had recorded a, um, like a, a kind of a demo. He'd done an instrumental. He put a, a hook over this instrumental. And it was actually pretty good. I really liked it. Like the his tone was good. The rhythm was good. And the song was actually pretty good. This was way before we ever considered kind of doing anything sort of serious. He sort of showed me that song. Some random dudes in Melbourne had sent Josh this instrumental that he did a hook on. And I thought, this is actually pretty good, man. So I ended up doing a – I chucked a verse on it. I chucked the verse on it. I think Josh done the second verse. I can't quite remember. But that was my first thought of like, actually, we could probably – uh, get something going here. Like the demo aside, that was okay. That particular song, I was like, man, this is, he's got, he's got a bit of something, there's something here. So um, from that point, I remember, Josh, we ended up booking uh, some tickets to go to Melbourne. Yeah, bro. Yeah. We were, yeah. Were, were we, I can't remember, you might be able to remind me, but were we, had we come up with the name yet? We had come up with the C Company name. Yeah, we did. We did. We did. We go. We went down to Melbourne. We'd only been. We hadn't even recorded a song yet together. You and I. No, 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 um, no, no. No, it hadn't even got to that point. And, and to be fair, like I was. Um, I never really. I don't think I ever told you this, bro. But because of the group that you were with with the boys back in Hamilton, I always. I I, I wasn't saying fan girling, but I was like, damn, um, I'm going down to <laughs> Melbourne. Going down to Melbourne with Ronnie, oh, this, is, this is pretty bad. Like Ronnie's a, a bona fide musician. Like he actually knows how to play an instrument, and he, he's he's talented. Like me, I I can just tell some really good jokes. Maybe that'll that'll get me and get me by. <laughs> um, but when we went to yeah, we went to Melbourne, and do you remember they had hookups with that other group, bro? And we we laughed at their name. We were like, no, nah, we don't want to hook up with the crinoids. The crinoids. No, the pop. Be- remember the remember the pop bellies, bro. Oh, the pot bellies, yeah, another, yeah. The pot bellies, remember that? There, yeah. yeah. There's like, oh, we're, we're, we're looking to sign some group called the pot bellies. Like, the pot bellies. What kind of a name yeah. is that? <laughs> yeah, look, rubbish, rubbish. They'll go nowhere. Uh, yeah, they well, they ended up, they did. <laughs> and, but yeah. yeah, sorry. Oh, was it that but pot no, that's bellies? Where we started from. Was it the that? Pot yeah, bellies, that pot, oh no. <clears throat> yeah, right. Yeah. So I just want to, I just want to pick up off that. So we booked. You know, we had. I've listened to Josh's. Uh, like Josh has heard a bit of my music because that's all our mates. I've heard his instrument, his sort of demo CD. <clears throat> then the song, the single that he, this, I just got the feeling, I think it was called. So we just booked, we flew to Melbourne, bro, kind of on a whim, you know, which like, bro, let's, let's just do it. We don't know these guys in Melbourne. The instrumental's pretty cool. Let's just cruise. We don't even know them at all, bro. We, we, we don't know what they look like. You know, this is earlier days of internet where you, it's not as, it's not as social network as it is. You can't do a lot of research on people. So we flew to Melbourne. I can't even, I think we might have got a taxi to this random suburb in Melbourne. We knock on the door and this emo dude, bro, with his hair hanging over half his face. He's like dressed in black clothes. Hi, hi guys. These must be uh, uh, the guys with, in the demo. I was like, I looked at Josh and I was like, bro, what have you done, bro? Like that was my first thought. I was like, what have, what have we done? There's this random emo looking um, dude and we're in Melbourne. And I, I've only not long been in Sydney. So I'm like, I don't even really know Melbourne, bro. So we go in and he sort of sits us down and kind of runs us over. Because we went there to record the EP, eh, bro? Was it the EP we, we sort of originally set up to record? Yeah. So we had that, we had a little five-song EP that we were going to record as well while we were there. Uh, so all of this came about from Josh's little hookup from these guys from Melbourne. And then they said, come and do our song. And at the same time, we'll record your EP. We'll produce your EP. Now, these five songs of the EP were songs we had been working on for the last few weeks. It's kind of our, it was kind of our first sort of foray into the C Company. We were originally called C Company. Josh, I'll let you take it over, bro. C Company. Because that was pretty much your kind of, uh, your idea. Yeah. So, yeah, just to touch on that guy that we met in Melbourne. Um, I think you started making fun of him too, bro. Calling him Fallout yeah. Boy. Like, yeah, one yeah, morning, yeah. one morning, <laughs> and I was like, oh, that. We need this guy. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> was, that's a, and we met that professor. Remember, there was a lecturer. There was yeah. a lecturer there from university as well. Yeah. He was like, "Hey guys, I uh, really dig your stuff," and, and he started going real intellectual about how in depth our lyrics were and stuff, and like mm. how he really liked Ronnie's lyrics. I think he just liked Ronnie 
physically. Um, but he, um, yeah, he really went into depth on how deep our lyrics were. And I was like, man, we basically just wrote this on a train <laughs> on our way here. Um, but yeah. Uh, but so the name, the name, our, our original name before the company was C Company. And C Company came from, um, because both Ronnie and I, Whakapapa, both Ronnie and I, our family tree genealogy um, goes back to um, our grandfathers who fought in the in both world wars, but fought in the Second World War under C Company. C Company was part of the Māori Battalion, so there's A Company, B Company, and C Company, and our grandfathers fought under C Company. So that's where the name C Company came from, um, was from the Māori Battalion that a lot of people thought we were because we were they thought we were crips i suppose but they thought we were mm. gangsters but no that's not that's not where it came from that's where the original wording came from just on that too bro i oh, will get back to the melbourne thing but we did a gig one time i'm fast forwarding a little bit and we're c company and we've we've got our little sort of ep and we're up there performing it's kind of like a uh, i think it was at a university or something so it's a lot of, a lot of youth a lot of youth and we're up there and we're throwing around the c c you know c company and then in the crowd, you could start to see people sort of sparking up and throwing out the bloods, and it turned into oh. kind of like a, almost like a gang thing, mm. man. Like, you know, people thought we were throwing mm. up the seers and crips because we were running around, see, see. And I think I, what I remember anyway was after that gig, I thought we sort of came to the realisation that, well, I don't know if this, the seas, man, probably the connotation of it's in the music sense, it's probably not going to work too well if we want to sort of further it. So mm. that's where the, the change to the company came about. But just sort of rewinding back a bit, rewinding back a bit. Um, during that Melbourne trip, we recorded our EP. Do you remember the place we went to, bro? We went into this recording studio, oh, and yeah. we were like, "Can we use a toilet? I want to use a toilet." And we walk into the toilet, and there's skulls on the toilet, and there's a a cage hanging from the roof of the toilet, and it's got a baby head's doll, and the doll's just spinning inside this. So it's a real creepy kind of vibe, man. The, the recording studio was a real creepy vibe, and we there we did our EP and. We've got the microphone, and you know, in front of the microphone, there's like skeletons hanging. You could swear there are real bones, bro. So it was a real eerie, real eerie vibe. Which was, do you remember all this, bro? Do you remember that? Yeah, bro. And we were we were still kind of fresh from New Zealand too, eh? So this yeah, this is something new for us, bro. We're not used to this art sort of a stuff like that. We were fresh yeah. from like the farm, bro. So we weren't we we're kind of used to that. Remember that they had that um, they had this real antique piano that was in there bro like i remember that i remember yeah. vividly because a guy explained how much money it was worth and then ronnie was jumped on the piano and started playing it and then the guy came through and he's like <clears throat> excuse me guys uh please don't touch the i don't know 1843 piano and ronnie was like oh bing, 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 bing. <laughs> then, yeah, nearly, <laughs> nearly got kicked out before we even started so we had to had to come in and have a talk to us about not touching anything and ronnie just been like we, we were kids man we were still kids then so Ronnie just been Ronnie. He just started wanting to touch everything. And they're like, ooh, bro, look at these dolls. Ooh, bro, look at these skeletons. And I was, I was like, bro, you know, you can hear us like, next door like because we're in the booth. This is the booth. So he can hear us, bro. He can, in the recording studio, he can hear everything we're saying, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it was ooh, eerie, bro. bro. It, was a, it was a creepy, was uh, creepy was experience, mm. which kind of, in, in, in some sort of way, you know, sort of sets up for the rest of our a rest of how we went, man. Like some of the relationships we come come through along the way were just strange and weird. And but anyway, so we record the five. We record their song. It actually come out really good. I got to add, mm. bro. They, they were high level engineer. You know, they were high level engineers. That the, the the sound was crisp. So there were no joke. They they weren't. They, they were no joke in that respect. We were their first sort of branch into hip hop. So I, I, they didn't really get the hip hop scene as such, the sound. But um, we, they took us out, hey bro. They took us out one night, and they had a contract in front of us. Um, and Josh was wasted. No, he he, he wasn't. Bro. We, had, we, had, we, we had we had we had had a we had had a few drinks. You know, we had we, we did the recording. Everything came out really good. Uh, obviously, they hadn't mixed and mastered it. It was just the recording session of it. It was going to be our first EP, so our little five-song EP. And they took us out and they sort of threw contracts under us and they've sort of, you know, they've given us a few drinks and and Josh just signed it, bro. He didn't even read it. Nah, we both didn't sign it. We, oh, we both didn't read it. I'm sorry, bro. We, we, 
I like, like Josh mentioned we quite differently. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it differently, bro. I remember saying, "Hang on, bro. I think we should read this first And you're like, "No, no bro. they seem like pretty cool dudes." I was, just... I was like, no, "I, I kind of want to read it, bro." And, you, and then he talked me into it, like he does with most stuff we do. Ronnie just talked me into signing it because I remember waking up the next morning and going, "Bro, I think I think we signed something last night." Ron was like, "What?" And I said, oh, "We we signed something last night." And then I could tell, like, I don't remember signing it, but. I could tell it wasn't right because I'd sign mine with my name and then a big smiley face <laughs> right next to it. So you could, yeah, we weren't, we weren't of sound mind when we signed those contracts. Yeah. Can I, can Sorry, I just, uh, this is sort of, this has piqued my interest a little bit here, but I don't know if you guys remember the very first band meeting we had when I first joined the band, right? And I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail, but, and cause I'd met Josh on the Friday night. Anyway, when it comes round to my time of joining the band, I'll, I'll, I'll go into detail, but that just reminds me, we were sitting, we were sitting, was that your place, Ronnie, uh, was it Doonside or something like that? We're sitting Doonside, there, yeah, have lunch, yeah. and Josh says <laughs> to me, oh, bro, you're going to have to sign a contract. <laughs> you have to sign the, con- <laughs> the contract to to <laughs> pass any rights to any previous material because that belongs to us. <laughs> so, of course he did. Yeah. I wasn't there. I was. I was. Is that what happened, Josh? Is that what happened? Yes. No. Well, you were yes. there, bro. Because it was your house. It was so your house. You were there. Um, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. I think no. She, I remember yeah. our first meeting. Hang on, because we brought. We were like, bring a plate, boys, or Lord, bring food. Oh, and I remember yeah, yeah. Stevie. Stevie brought some real nice vegetarian meals, and us being moldy boys, we were like, oh, what's that? We're like, oh. I think it's a vegetarian pasta. No, so yeah. no meat. I'm like, no, I don't. I don't think it's meat, bro. So we we tried it. And I loved it. I loved it. But the other boys were like, "Oh, oh this is real. Like, people really don't eat meat." <laughs> yeah, my my beautiful wife made that for us that day, and it was lovely. Yeah, that was lovely. And it was lovely. Yeah, it was lovely. Beautiful. Yeah, it was <laughs> stunning. I still remember it. It was creamy texture. <laughs> no meat. Um, but beautiful. no, do you also remember at that same time? I think that was the first. First meeting, we had that other drummer that we had lined up, Stevie Martin. We had, it, we had, Martin, yeah, Martin. Remember Martin? Martin. Had, uh, true to form, Martin hadn't turned up to any meetings that we'd had, any practices, and he chose to turn up to this one where we had gone and got another drummer, and it was so <laughs> awkward, eh? It yeah. was. So, it was so, we could talk about that later, but it was so. Yeah, awkward. yeah, we will. But no, just going back to what I was saying, yeah, just, you know, you, you was that whole sort of uh, once bitten, twice shy thing. So you had, to make sh- you had to make sure that I knew that I was going to be signing a contract. So I, I have no rights to your music. So <laughs> so yep. that's obviously come from that, uh, that uh, you guys um, not reading that yeah, original us. contract. It was so, still yeah. waiting when you to sign. Like that, I feel so bad. Yeah, you should. <laughs> yeah. Well, they started, once, once we signed that contract, they started using our songs, which we had written, yeah. produced on their platforms. And we kind of just, we, we, we continued to play those songs over the next sort of couple of years, I think. But essentially it felt like it was their music. Hmm. Yeah. So was any, was any of those, was any of those songs, did we, did we ever play them together? I don't, I don't, I don't think, think, think so. No, I don't no. think you've even heard them, bro. Okay. I think there was something that's, where you stopped away and we never. Across the, no, when you came in, eh? we were playing that music. Yeah, well, the jeans came in as well, like if we we could fast forward a little bit. We had a big gig. This is probably where jeans comes in, but I don't think yeah at the time we knew we were there, but we had just sort of scrubbed them off. I think we had cut, I think we were sort of like halfway through an album by then. Yep. So we kind of sort of moved off from that process. Yep. Yep. But after that, bro, after that album, uh, the EP actually came out not too bad. the The sound was good. The music was pretty good, and we had the instrumentals. So we. We started to actually sort of uh, sort of gather up a bit of pace, bro. Like people were listening, we were, were playing at clubs. And do you remember this, bro? There, there was a there was a, a girl named Freeze uh, at the time. She was pretty big in the music industry. She ran a lot of gigs and shows, and she was on a radio station. I can't remember what the radio station was, but we used to listen to it Monday nights. I think they did a, a show, like a hip hop show, and they put on a lot of local music. And I remember us ringing up, and um, we kept requesting our own music. As as different people, you know. Oh, have you got? To, uh, we're, we're, we're wanting to hear this uh, C Company music. And she goes, "Oh, it's like the fifth time someone's rang rang tonight." The C Company sounds remarkably like the same person. 
Well, we, we kind of went with it, bro. So Freeze was, like I mentioned, she was big in the music industry, particularly the hip-hop industry, and we were still trying to find a leg in, leg into the industry, you know? So would re- every Monday we'd listen to the show and we'd ring her up and go, oh, we're, you know, we're, we're hoping you've got some of that C Company music. Oh, no, I don't. I haven't heard of them. You know, the next week we'll do it again. Three weeks, four weeks. I think about the, about the fifth week, she goes, "With you know, you've, you're the same person as sort of rung about the C Company. Um, I'm going to have to look into it further. So she finds me, bro. She gets a hold of my details and I send her the EP. And then she plays the music and people start to hear the music. It's radio. It's a, it's a hip hop, hip hop hour. So you got a lot of the youth are listening to it. And then that sort of started picking up steam, bro. It started gathering momentum. Later, she comes to find out it was us ringing and, and it become this big sort of, uh, funny thing, you know, but that's how we kind of crept ourselves into the industry was kind of pretending to be someone, someone else. So at that point, she gets us onto her roster. She had a little roster. She had a couple of singers, a couple of rappers. She had about six people in her roster. She gets us into her roster and we start playing shows. And then she asks us, bro, um, do you want to run the radio station? So, hey, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And, I, tried, and I, I thought I did well as in the radio station. Yeah, we, we remember we interviewed some really cool people there too, bro. Do you remember Spearhead? Michael Franti and Spearhead. Michael so Franti, we, um, yeah, remember. Yeah. yeah. So this was kind of our next step from the EP, uh, you know, getting on, to the, getting on with Freeze. We hopped onto the radio station was kind of our next uh, pathway. We hopped onto this radio station. We started hosting this one-hour hip-hop show. So obviously we were slipping in our own music and, and our music was getting out to those ears and we had Michael Franti on, so we sang with him. The video is there somewhere, but we're singing with him. You know, you could. there's a picture of um, Michael Franti and uh, Shireen Anderson's her name, bro. She's a big Jamaican singer. They're singing live in the studio. Me and Josh are at the back, so you can see us just sort of tweaking out in the back, man, freaking out about, like, look look what's happening, bro. You know? Uh, th- this is in the space of it's not too long a space, man. I'm, I might be a year from recording that EP right through to now we're sitting in a, a recording, a, a studio with Michael Franti from Spearhead. Um, and I knew Michael Franti a lot. You know, a lot of people didn't, but I knew Spearhead, so it was like a big buzz. Josh knew him too, so it was a big buzz for us. So, the, you know, this is the pathway we're kind of headed in, man. The EP starting to get out on radio because we're on the station. Uh, we're, we're sort of in circles with American music artists. Uh, you know, we've hooked up with this this Freeze character who's kind of in the, uh, I guess, in the hip-hop industry in Sydney. So I think things are starting to happen, eh, bro? Starting to sort of, yep. wind, you know, winding up a little bit. Yep, yep, and that's about the time too, bro, that we um we sort of started to make our own sort of music. And you remember we made a couple of um boom clips, bro. We made we made a we didn't have an EP yeah. or anything. We just had a couple of singles. Then we started to make boom clips, and because I had some bros that were fighting at the time, they were UFC like looking to break into the UFC. We used a couple of them. You remember that, bro? We went to the, mm, to yeah, the boys' gym. Move, move, move yeah, yeah, move. Yeah, I think you might remember Mover, and we um, oh, that was so budget, bro. I remember we we couldn't go. We we wanted to go through the whole gym and stuff like that with this camera, but because we didn't have a long enough extension cord for this lamp that we were holding behind the camera, <laughs> remember that? we couldn't go through the whole gym. <laughs> and the only the only uh, effect we had because this is before like all the cool apps that we've got for editing now. I mean, the only app we had was, uh, the only effect we had was, oh, when I whacked the camera, bro, just shake the camera to make it look like an earthquake. That's <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that was our only, yeah. only sort of effect, but um, special effect. So, <laughs> so that, so that um, we we made that yeah. clip. We made another clip as well for one of our R and B songs that we had made. And you remember, bro? We waited up. Remember Rage TV? That used to be we used yeah, to play bro. a lot of uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember we were on Rage. They sent us back a, an email, oh, like a, yeah, it was an email. They sent, they let us know though that we were going to be on Rage mm-hmm. between like one o'clock in the morning and four o'clock in the morning on a Sunday morning. Mm. So me and Ronnie sat, sat up like all night, just waiting for that one moment when our song came on, uh, came on Rage. Remember that, bro? We were at your place in Paramount. Yeah, oh, yep, that was, yep. that was, ah, that was, yeah, we're like, bro, we've cracked it. We've made it, bro. <laughs> but we're going to stay humble. We're going to stay humble and try and be level-headed. But yeah. we've made it, even though no one's probably watching this this video. Clip so right you, can kind of, uh, you can kind of imagine, like, the progress, man, it come through. Like, we were certainly kind of headed for, 
You know, we've gone from catching up with each other on a random phone call to our songs on TV, bro. Like sitting alongside Eminem was, you know, two songs before us. And yeah, so so it's going pretty quick. Like the people were kind of surrounded with and all that sort of stuff. And um, like it was pretty good back those uh, earlier filming days too, because we were sort of hanging around with people that were trying to expose themselves to Sonny Bry. Was it Sonny Bry? Yeah. 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 So he was trying to expose his craft as well. So it was kind of a scratch, scratch each other back thing. You know, we wanted to expose the music. He wanted to expose his uh, cinematography and stuff. So it was, we were surrounded with a good, good unit. Jamie Tehuna, yeah, we he, was, he was like a yeah. rising star in the UFC. And yeah, yeah Tyson Tom, Pedro. Tehuna had, yeah, Tyson, Tyson Pedro. you know, all these. Yeah, Tyson's so only about kind of, 13 in that film's first film club. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in there. He's in there. So there's there's a scene in there where we're all standing there with some remember that bro we were like samurai swords and like sort of machetes and stuff it was yeah so weird bro we're, we're, we're it was standing so in a cul de sac it's ten o'clock at night we've got like all these cars are shooting the lights at us and we're all standing there with samurai swords and then start get nunchucks man Tamatehuna's got a yeah, pair nunch- of nunchucks he's had nunchucks we had a guy that was um, trying to break into the stunt scene remember Normie. Norm was yeah, breaking Normie, into yeah, the yeah, stunt yeah. scene, so he brought his motorbike out and started pulling yeah. monos and stuff. And, uh, yeah, that, Luke, that was Lucas cool. Brown. Sonny, big Lucas Brown. <laughs> Lucas Brown, yep, who became yeah. a heavyweight champion of, a, uh, of the world. Um, yeah. But Sonny is actually, like, all of those guys have really gone on to do great things. Sonny is now in charge of, um, well, I'm going to say, the media videography team of um, the Rabbitohs, South Sydney Rabbitohs. Mm-hmm. He's in charge of all of their media. He's, like, a big boss there now. Jamie obviously went to the UFC. Tyson went on to be into the UFC. Uh, Normie went on to become a, a stuntman for a lot of movies like Mission Impossible. Uh, man, me and Ronnie became dads. Yeah, now and we, we're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> I remember too. I, I remember I bought it. I, like we needed extras in that particular video because it's you know the, the song's called Move and it's got a, a real heavy tone, like a sort of real heavy drum, and it's kind of for the clubs type of song. And we needed extras, so I bought a couple of my um, mates. I brought them along and, you know, can you just come and be extras? They're drinking. And we're hanging out with all the UFC up and comers and stars. And so my mate's over in the corner, pissing on one of the cars. What's it, bro? He's pissing on one of the yeah. cars. Pissing on one of the yeah. cars. And I think Jamie comes over, Jamie Tuhuna, prime, prime Jamie Tuhuna. But uh, don't piss there on the cars, bro. And my stupid mate turns around and uh, looks to step him out. And I was like, oh, bro. Josh, bro, can you do something, please, bro? I don't want anything to do with this. <laughs> I, I don't want to do anything here, bro. So that yeah. it just sort of shows you the um, environment we're kind of um, surrounded in, man. You know, we've, we've still got bros that are just working nine to fives, and then we're also surrounded with fellas that are reaching UFC status mm-hmm. and everything in, in between that, bro, uh, in the course yeah. of, I don't know, 14 months, maybe 15 yeah, man. months. It was real quick. It was real fast. Oh, yeah. So up and up to that point where we're doing little shows, we're doing little gigs. You know, we, we won't um, sort of get into too much detail about those, bro. But things were things were happening, and then uh, I'll fast forward a little bit because we want you know we want to get get news into this conversation too. We got an uh, uh, opportunity to play back in New Zealand, bro. So we're, we're looking at you know I suppose you could talk, call it a tour back in NZ. And uh, for my, for both of us, Fakatane, big big show, the Natiawa Festival. Massive show. It's probably in its fourth year. Uh, Maisie Rika was the main main act. And at that time, Maisie Rika's, uh, she's top of the food chain in New Zealand music, like right at the top of the food chain. And they're kind of using us as a um, the international act. You know, we're going to bring this whole new crowd of people. Uh, Maisie's big, but doesn't attract everyone. So they're using the company, with, with the company at that stage, to be this... Uh, the hip hop, the cool hip hop edge, and they want to draw this whole other crowd of people to this massive show. Uh, it's the fourth year of it. Each year, the show is getting bigger, and they've, and all the local papers are talking about us. You know, they're talking about Josh. They're talking about me because we're from there. So all the talk is about oh, these, you know, these these, these Australian boys that are homegrown boys. So it's big, man. This 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 show's primed to be massive. So, you know, our pathway's been pretty big, and then this is at that point of our, our musical careers. This is prepped to be our big, big breakout show. You know, we're about to break into the, the New Zealand music scene. Uh, we're, we're, we're alongside top-of-the-line top artists, and they're anticipating a massive sold-out type of crowd. 
You know, they're, they're, they're anticipating this massive crowd. Back in our hometown, I might add. So not only that, uh, that, but, but it's just just it's quickly, Pukatani, Pukatani produce, um, you know, bands like Quarter, LAV of recent. Um, they produce some really good sporting talent. So Pukatani is quite a quite a buzzing place for those who don't mm. know. But it's it's had some really good talent come out of. Benji Marshall comes from there. Ronald Lavender comes from there. Like some I'll really good sporting that, talent. Yeah, but nice. but nice. like like Josh says, man, it's uh, it's almost. I don't know if Josh felt it. He could probably speak on his own behalf. But for me, knowing that, you know, you got Korda, uh, Maisie's also from home. A lot of talent back home. So I was nervous, bro. Like, I was completely like, holy shit. Like, you know, uh, not a lot of people back home had particularly heard our music yet. You know, they've, they've caught bits and pieces. Um, social media wasn't massive at that stage. So, you know, it was a little bit harder to sort of get the music back and forth. <clears throat> I was nervous as, bro. Because I've got all, all my family knows they're writing us up in the Beacon, which is the local paper. So my family knows about it. They're texting, and when are you coming? Are you excited? And so from my own point of view, I was pretty nervous, bro. Like I was pretty nervous. And at that stage, I think it was just me and you, Josh. We didn't really have a, a band as such then, or yeah. we might have been. Yeah. No, we had a band. This introducing uh, this is where Gino jumps in now, yeah. bro. Yep. Yeah. So I think we. How did so? How did we? Oh, well, I suppose this so is we, where uh, Gino so comes in. Another, so we, we're yeah, we had, a, we had to um, create. We had to create that band atmosphere. We realised we needed, we needed something else than just a DJ or a backing track. Like we needed to have some live instruments added into our um, our, our artillery, I suppose, if you would. And so we, I got together with another bro, Tones Tony, who was probably the, one of the most, besides Stevie and Gino, he's probably the most talented, multi-talented person I, I've ever met. This guy is. Crazy good. So we met Tony, and then Tony said, oh, "I've got a, I've got a bro that's a bass player, and we had a song called The Grimy Pirate." And Ronnie said, "Bro, no one can play the bass line for the song. You know, this, the bass line on the song is way too hard. Like you'd have to give him about intricate. two months yeah. to learn it. It's intricate, you know, two months to learn it." So we met the bro Gino. I think the night before we flying out, bro. I think we had like one practice, and then yep. Gino, which I'm sure Gino will jump in soon. Gino jumps on and he then Ronnie shows him the baseline and Gino's just like, Oh yeah, is it like this, bro? And he done it and me and Ronnie looked at each other like, Oh <laughs> damn, bro, like we got, we got a real band now. And so we introduce now Gino. Hello everyone. Hello, Gino. The funny thing is that Tones rang me, he's like, because I'm a guitarist, and he's like, um, you can play the bass, eh? And I was like, Oh, I'll give it a go. But um and then I ended up being the bass player for a while. And um <laughs> Yeah, Tones is my cousin's husband. Yeah, that's how I know Tones. I think um I think um Trim eh, Josh. I think Trim got you in contact with Tones, I think, or Albie. And then it yeah, kind of just yeah. yeah, the family my family just kind of came into the group. And yeah, no, it was um yeah, only one practice pretty much. <laughs> As normally the way it is. <laughs> but yeah, we ended up going to Natiawa. It was me, Tones, Josh, and Ronnie, and um, no, it was cool going back um, to their hometown pretty much. Um, it was it was out of it because, like, these guys were, like, famous there, so it was, like, really trippy just seeing everyone, like, crowding them, surrounding them. Hey, remember that? I remember hopping off, off, off stage when we finished performing, and you got Maisie Rika and her band is just to the left ready to come up. And it, I don't know, the look in her eye seemed kind of seemed me blown away. Was I was like, oh, far up. I'm looking at Maisie like that. It seems like she's looking at us like that. So me and Josh, well, we all hopped off stage and just a swarm of people, kids just swamped us, bro. And they were running up and sort of giving them their arms for us to sign their autographs and stuff. So me and Josh are there for yeah. probably like three hours. No, it wasn't, it wasn't that long. <laughs> probably, probably like probably 10 minutes. We're, 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 just, we're sitting there signing all these – we're just signing their like shirts and arms and they're just like, putting up their necks. And with, It was strange, man. Like I hadn't encountered that type of stuff before, man, where kids were just really, really – there was a gate there only for artists, so they couldn't come over the fence. But they're all sort of just pushing each other into this fence and they're all sort of reaching out and giving, and giving us paper and – and I don't know. It's, just, at it's that interesting, moment, thought, bro. That you would, is, um, it, is this? It's interesting that you would mention that you were quite nervous because I think that for me, 
being the seasoned artist that I was, I was quite relaxed. Gino oh. was quite <laughs> relaxed. Tunes was quite relaxed. We were all quite relaxed. Um, but I, I think before oh, you be, know, be, being, being the, the, the head of the band, bro, you know, um, you know, <laughs> he had a lot riding. Being the head of the band, bro, the pressure, the pressure, the pressure must have been so bad for you. Um, but I remember being up on stage, and we, Gino was that fresh to the band that I didn't even know his last name. Or I didn't actually know where he came from in New Zealand. or um, And I remember being on stage and I was introducing the band members and I said to Ronnie, I said, um, bro, wh- where's the bro Gino from? What's his last name? And, and he said, oh, Watkins. Gino's last name's not Watkins. Um, and I said, oh, where's he from? He said, oh, Takapuna, I think, bro. I was oh, everybody, Gino Watkins from Takapuna on the base. And Gino's like, oh, this is my last name. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> and that same performance with Ronnie being so nervous, highly nervous. I remember we nearly broke out into a fight on the stage. On the whilst stage. Performing because, um, on the stage. I'm, I'm there doing my thing. I'm vibing. I'm feeling the crowd, the energy. And Rod, Rod t- Ron turns to me. He's like, bro, like puts his hand over his mic. And he's like, bro, you better get, you better get your head in the game, bro, because I don't think you're pulling oh. your weight right now. <laughs> And I was like, bro, don't worry about and what my, I'm doing. And, and like, this, this is why we're performing. Your flat. You're flat. Like, bro, you, can you even harmonize? And I was like, bro, are we going to do this now? Like, are we honestly going to do this now while we're right in the middle of our set? And um, I remember that. I remember that uh, that performance quite well. That was one of the that was one of the highlights for me throughout our music career because I got to play an instrument. Do you remember me playing an instrument? I got to play the keys. <laughs> and oh, no, no, the keys. and yeah, time funny. for an ad break. <laughs> this <laughs> podcast was brought to you by... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I just want to... Hang on. I just want to go back to the... I mean, that whole... Um, very unlike Ronnie to be aggressive on stage. To no, his he's never done that to you either, has nah. he? He's never done that to you. <laughs> no, nah, I just nah. remind you of the gig we did it. Remember we did it at that uh, at the basement in Blacktown? Basement. And I think it I might have remember, bro. Yeah, I do. I do. I remember. Sorry, um, Steve, I don't remember. Yep. And I think it was <laughs> one I don't know, was it one of our reason. first was one of our first like full band gigs. The first one we did was like off we we're in the back of a trailer in Blacktown or something. But anyway, this is the first gig or something. And um was was it something something to do with the click track or something like that, or I made a slight mistake or missed something? But anyway, and Ronnie's turning around happened? and he's staring what at happened? me, going, "What's happening? What's happening?" <laughs> and then, uh, and then at the end of the song, sorry about that. That was our drummer. Basically, he doesn't know what he's doing back there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. But I do. I do. I do too. Like, sorry, so harsh to do that. Sorry story. about our drummer. So... Yeah, he's only new. He's new. He doesn't oh. know the songs or something like something like that. And oh. I was like, oh man. And then I spent I spent the next or well, up till today still trying to <laughs> trying to get your respect back, bro. No, nah, you, you got it, bro. You, no, you, earned it, you earned it, Stevie. You got it back, bro. That drum line and two bucks. Oh, sold, bro. Sold. Thank sold. You, brother. <laughs> Remember back in New Zealand when we went to Ngatiawa Festival. How tones will just like eat so much. Remember we went to Wendy's? <laughs> yeah. Three burger, three burger meal tones. Oh, yeah. It's crazy, man. It's a highlight of um, <laughs> yeah. that trip. But it was, what, what was good about that festival was that was literally our first performance together because we had tones on the drums then, uh, who I had only just got to know over the, you know, the, the sort of weeks leading up. And Gino, who I got to know days before. So um, yeah, it was really good, brother. The show was good. It was funny when I think back to that um, the little argument we had. Even though we're arguing on stage, in between lines, yeah, in between lines of the song, I, I still don't think the people in the crowd would have known exactly what was going on because we'd turn back and face the back of the stage to curse out the other guy, <laughs> and then we'll turn back, perform the song while the other one turned back to curse him out, and we just rolled around like it was a. Uh, just, just beautifully done, bro. Almost like it was part of the show. You know, it was just a great choreography. <laughs> so, um, and at, at the end of the day, the gig was the, the gig was perfect, man. For for my feeling, like for what I thought was going to happen, it, it turned out perfect. And at that stage, I thought that was the pinnacle. I was like, we're 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 making it, bro. We've mm. we've made it. Like, look 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 where we were. We travelled. Like you could you could call us international artists by then. I guess you could say because we, we've travelled, man. We've travelled. 
to another country to perform. So up until that point. And then we continued to, uh, uh, we we done a lot of sort of other gigs when we got back. Or anything further on that, bro, Josh? No, I just said the notes had to be written down on the keys for me. But um, and the camera flashed over it. Remember the camera for the crew? Yeah, one yeah, note. One note. The, Josh, Josh, <laughs> we've written it down on the keys, <laughs> and the camera flat panned over. Remember the camera for the crowd? It panned over yeah, the keys, and I was playing the one note. And they're like, yeah. oh, did that guy have? Did that have to get written down for him? Because <laughs> they had a um, the stickers. They, they had a the they had a camera, and the camera was um, showing the footage on a, a big screen next to the stage. So as the camera moved, people could either look at the stage or, you know, look at, at what the camera's capturing. And it came right across the top of our keyboard and, the sticker there. and it had like a little sticker. <laughs> it didn't have keys or, or chords or anything. It was just one one <laughs> note. Like, push this key, Josh. Push this <laughs> key. <laughs> Middle C. Middle C. <laughs> <laughs> Middle C. <laughs> But it was um, good, man. Was like, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, like up to that point, like I, I personally felt that we had found kind of the core of our band, you know, tone, tones there with the drummer. And then yeah. and obviously Gino learned, I don't know how many songs we did, eight songs in the space of about an afternoon. So I was like, holy shit, this dude, man, this guy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we come back to Oz after that experience, which was an awesome experience. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we could go on for ages about that experience, but we'll, you know, we'll probably move so forward. We had a couple, few more gigs, eh? We had a few gigs yeah, around. We did. We had yeah, a couple more. I, yeah, one of my other cousins jumped in to play the bass so I could jump on guitar. There was Albert. Yeah. And then we were kind of like, they weren't really like, per, they wanted to be permanent, eh? Yeah. They, they were sort of just filling just, They're just jammers. They just wanted to have a jam. Yeah, and helping us out. Oh. So I think that's when we decided. So there, was, there was five of us, didn't eh? Yeah, yeah. So we had a full kind of band at that point, which was probably a couple of months after the New Zealand gig. We kind of formed the original, I guess, the company then. Uh, the boys didn't have much, uh, like Albie and Tones didn't have much sort of writing experience as such. So it was still sort of between me and Josh at that stage. But I do remember around about that time, I remember we were up in, I think I lived in Parramatta at the time and I was kind of mucking around with a few chords. And Gino jumped up on the keys and just started um ding 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 I was like what what is that bro? What is that like oh just some chords I was mucking around with. I was like do it again bro ding they started doing it again and then um I recorded it which came to be uh what was what's the name of it? Yeah under a spell. Do you remember that? Yeah yeah I remember that. So Josh, you, I think, uh, when did you hear that song, bro? Do you remember when you, did you hear the instrumental? Were you there with us when that was, when he was playing that? Yeah, yeah, I was there. I was there. We were up at Gene's, um, Gene's mum's place, I think, when I first heard it. But all so. the way yeah. back yeah, before yeah. that, in Tony's garage, the first sort of, I suppose, song I remember is Two Bucks, bro. Because it was just the we were just mucking around yeah, yeah. and just Accusing. and you were just playing yeah, basic chord right. chords yeah. and mm. yeah and then yep. um yeah yep. we sort of made that was the first song I remember that we made together mm. the real garage yeah. kind of slow reggae yeah. tone yeah. Eh, that yeah. one yeah I remember that which later on I suppose we'll talk about what you know where that went so know? I think you Ronnie wanted mm. you were like talking about possibly making an album mm. writing a you know, a catalog of songs and recording it. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Well, I, I, do, I do remember Two Bucks, and then I remember Under a Spell, because I like that sort of, um, that offbeat sort of tone. And yeah. um, and he made it, so I thought, man, that was kind of the point for me. Josh, Josh might have a different sort of thought, but I thought another person here, as well as us two, that can actually write the music as well. Because up until that point, I think, we knew Gino was a good musician. Um, I wasn't too sure about his previous sort of music, musical stuff because he had, he had been in earlier, but quite successful stuff actually. And it was that I thought, holy shit, this dude actually can can be part of the part of our group as a like a writer of the songs as well. And mm-hmm. then we obviously we did under a spell, and then he did another. What was the other song you? There was he another one. Um, yeah, um, no, one no one special. special. Yeah, yeah, had a very similar vibe, and then. Um, Obviously, Josh had to, like, one thing I really like about Josh, bro, is he, his idea 
his idea for ideas of songs are probably second to none. Um, he always just had some really cool ideas for music, like just ideas for songs, which I could kind of, kind of tack on the back of the idea and sort of make the music. Like he says he, he you know, doesn't play an instrument, but he can actually visualize hum, uh, melodies and all that kind of thing. So he's actually quite good at that. And translating that to us, well, and so we, you know, but don't tell him that, though, bro. Yeah. Cut the all out. Yeah. Just cut, cut the all out, bro. <laughs> cut his yeah, we'll man. just keep that between us, bro. <laughs> Look at him there. Look, he's loving but, um, it. So the three of us kind of made like a <laughs> yeah. cool triangle. Of- Let's change the subject. Oh, oh. I'm almost up, bloody yeah. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. No, nah, but but just 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 on that, bro. What 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 I'm sort of getting at is, um, we all sort of had strengths towards this kind of uh, album that we were aiming to produce. You know, um. Like Gino brought this new fresh ideas. Josh always had some sort of real, yeah. sort of weird, crazy ideas for songs, and then I was coming in and sort of writing some stuff as well. well I think it was the, the passion to the passion to for us all three of us to seem to have that passion, you know. I suppose and that drive, and that that was something that that really helped propel us on because I think that's why we've done it so fast in so little time is because we both had that drive to do something, and then Gino jumped in and he had the same drive. Um, as well, and then I know we just slowly started to form the three of us, and then we we realised we needed a drummer because our tones, our drummer didn't want to drum like the, that wasn't his his dream. Like mm. I suppose to be like where to get to that pinnacle, so where we wanted to get to, which was cool. So we found another drummer, and uh, you found another bass player. Run, just so happened to be yeah. at a party. Yeah, boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I think well. well Oh, oh, so who is? Because I've known, I know who his family, like man, who is knows my family since sort of uh, school days, but I didn't particularly know who he's very well. I'd, I'd heard of him. He's been a couple of years older than me, so as it is back back in those days, you <laughs> hang out with your age, you know, bro. So who is a sixty two now? <laughs> so he's a little, little bit older. Than me. <laughs> well, thank you, son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually, um, I know Ronnie's dead. And I, um, when I was back in Kobodo, I, I went to the gym there, and um, and I, it wasn't actually until I met uh, Nostradamus here um, <laughs> that um, Ronnie Senior, I may as well call him, he um, he talked about you, you know, because you know we had that conversation there when, um, you know, he used to come there and, and spot me or take me through um, certain exercises, and then. Um, Start talking about music, and then yeah, he pretty much just said that yeah, oh, you know, the son blah 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 into music blah blah blah, and pretty much that's kind of where we left it. Until yeah, I moved to I moved here Australia, actually boys, twenty years ago today. Hey, oh, congratulations! Twenty years ago today, I moved um, Sydney, Australia. Congratulations, yeah. mate! Oh yeah. Oh, man, how old are you, mate? It's gone that quick. How old are you, mate? <clears throat> anyway, um, so I've like got... Um, a bit late to move here when you're 50. Carry on, bro, sorry. <laughs> mm-hmm. Pension, bro. You get a pension. Ronnie and I both attended a 10-year wedding anniversary, which would have been back in 2011. I can't remember mm, which month. Yeah. And you know what? There was an, actually a photo going around for a while with uh, you were in it. Um, the bro T Bone, who happened to be the husband um, um, of the ten year wedding anniversary, and um, I've been trying to search for that photo and I can't find it. I can't remember who took it and tagged it anyway. And um, so that's pretty much the only thing that I can remember of that night. So the the bro T Bone said, "Look, you know, um, we're going to have a jam," and I'm like, "Oh, okay, who?" And he goes, "Oh, just me and." A- and a couple of the other bros. He goes, oh, I'll bring your guitar. And um, so, yeah, we, I rocked up there with uh, not only my bass, but with a steam pudding as well. So, um, And then, um, yeah, and then I seen the gear, drums and whatnot, so I went over there and started setting up. And then that's when Ronnie Lavender turned up. And it was pretty much kind of small talk at that time. It was better about, hey, bro, blah, 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 blah got to know each other, and then it was just, at that time, just, yeah, okay, what songs do we know? And we pretty much jammed through that night. 
Um, which I, I guess we've done okay, eh, Ronnie? Yeah, bro. It was okay. good. I was good. <laughs> and then, um, it, it was pretty much the well the, the end of that night where the, the band pretty much had to shut down. And Ronnie asked me if I was doing anything, and I said, oh, what, musically? And he goes, yeah. And I said, oh, no, nothing. And um, I've kind of come up um, just playing in covers bands, you know, pretty much since um, my early school days. I learned to play guitar when I was 11. I switched on to bass when I was about or oh, maybe 13. Um, that's only because um, my uncle at the time, I thought he had electric guitar and he had a bass. So I grabbed his bass and um, and I started learning that night. I, I had his Fender Jazz for a whole year before he came and got it. And then, you know, and after that, I, um, uh, my brother, my cousin and I, we, we were back in the era where it was, um, you know, Pearl Jam, Rage Against the Machine, Metallica, that kind of era. And um, so we were doing that raw three-piece stuff. Um, and that was school days. And then uh, leaving school and whatnot, I you know, pretty much joined uh, a couple of covers bands back in New Zealand. And then when I moved over here, I'd done nothing for a while. And then um, actually one of my um, bros um, that I used to play with um, back in New Zealand, um, he moved over anyway, hit me up and said, oh, look, um, what are you up to? And I said, oh, nothing. And he goes, oh, he's got a cousin that lives here. He's been living here for a while and, you know, wants to start something up. So we basically met up and we were pretty much, you know, three Māori boys that just wanted to play kind of that rockish, you know, whether it was Kiwi rock or Aussie rock or whatever, just rock. Um, unfortunately, you know, being Māori and whatnot, when you go out and do gigs and whatnot and uh, and, you're, and you, your crowd is Māori, then what do they want you to play? All the old school party songs, you know, and here's us three, you know, multi boys wanting to 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 rock out kind of thing. So um, yeah, that happened for a bit, and then and then I ended up, you know, pretty much doing nothing until um, yeah, I met Ronnie, and then um, so he actually, um, I think I'd only been on Facebook for about two years. I don't think I'd been out that long, eh? And Ronnie had sent me um, a link to to the Company Boy album. And then I remember sitting there in front of the PC and I think, oh, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think he gave me uh, like two or maybe three songs to learn. So I um, yeah, <clears throat> played them and I thought, oh, okay. Yeah. I, you know, I, I kind of liked, you know, the progressions and um, just the whole the feeling of the songs and whatnot. And I thought, oh, okay. So, yeah, I started learning them. And um, there was only three songs. And then I started listening to the album too, and I thought, well, it's quite clever. And then um, and then that's when we had organised for, um, I think, you yeah, a meeting, and that's pretty much when I met Martin, the... Uh, the, the old ex drummer, <laughs> and I remember, you know, rocking up there, and um, yeah, it was Martin on the drums, um, Gino. I think you're on your keys and get. Yeah, I think so at that time, and yeah. we just had a little jam outside in the the patio party. Um, I can't remember if if you were there, Josh. No, I don't think I was. I uh, didn't. Uh, I didn't get the email for that one. Uh, he left. Yeah. He left. Yeah, first, off, first, first time that he left the band. Yeah, well, it, 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 it must have been both those times that I, I wore the, my gum boots there. <clears throat> so yeah, we, we had a little jam and thought, oh well, sweet as. And I, I remember I kept um, turning to Gino and going, oh, you know, just um, as far as um, chords and whatnot, and and um, and I think it was Ronnie did say that Gino done, you know, pretty much a lot to do with the the bass lines and the album. Um, so, uh, I guess, you know, the feeling was good and whatnot. And, um, and then I guess our next jam was, um, oh, it wasn't even a jam. It was just the, yeah, the meeting. I, yeah, I didn't meet Stevie then, but I remember, um, you know, just becoming a, uh, I don't know if I what had become a member of the company then, but I remember seeing on, cause I'd like the company page seeing that, this so-called Stevie Taylor is the, you know, like the new drummer of the company. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> huh? 
who's this chip? <laughs> and what happened to Martin? <laughs> So, so I, remember, I, I remember rocking up to Ronnie's house and uh, the first thing I said was, but is there another drummer? Oh, yeah, 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 Stevie Taylor. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, no worries. So anyway, we're, um, so Stevie turns up, you know, we all meet and all of us are sitting down and the next minute he walks into the door. Oh, Martin. <laughs> or oh, someone forgot to uh, send in the memo. And... Um, <laughs> Yeah, and that, that's pretty much how I come about um, coming into the company. And, um, yeah, like, but you like getting back to the company boy album, yeah, I, I had a warm feeling about it, you know. And I thought, yeah, it's, it's groovy, it's funky enough. You know, um, I think at the time when Ronnie and I met at that party, I actually bought um, um, Wayne Royer. I don't know if you remember him. Well, yeah, but he actually yeah, told me, yeah. he goes, oh, yeah, he's in that band, the company. And I'm like, oh, nah, 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 I never heard of them. So, yeah, no, as far as the company boy album, yeah, I was, um, yeah, I was quite chuffed. Basically, before Hui had joined, we had spent how long making an album? Yeah. Good, maybe. Pretty quick, eh? Yeah, so <clears throat> we had an album that we recorded, self-funded, self-recorded, mm. released. And that's when we kind of decided we need to really have some permanent members mm. to play these songs at gigs and stuff. So that's when Huey came along in his, to the meeting in his gumboots. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. One thing that I liked about Huey's um, playing, bro, because he had that nice little slap part. Because I, I, I like mm. corn. Like I, I was really into corn and that sort of real heavy stuff. And he of, had that that same sort of feel about it. I was like, man, this is a could be a very interesting way we could take the music mm, with mm. someone that's got the influence of that sort of music, it's like like a real twangy sort of a slappy sort of bass. That real, I was like, so in terms of who we are coming mm. into the company was like a it wasn't just a person coming in that we needed to fill the spot. He actually filled the spot and gave us something that we needed as well uh, for who as well. So. It was good, man. It was good to have him mm. have him on as part of it as well. And then we needed a drummer. Did um, Stevie? Did you come with Hone? Was it to see me and um, Ronnie do a music video in the city? Yeah, I'll tell you what happened there. So yeah, um, take over. Um, I had been playing bass for the couple of years before I got back into playing drums again, right? So <clears throat> I'd finished up playing in a couple of covers bands and I um, think we'd had our first daughter, Claudia, and I just st- I stopped playing just to be a dad, you know. And then I started sort of picking up my sticks again and having a bit of a knock around on my pads and practice pads at home. And then it was one day I got a text message from, from yeah, John Williams. He says, bro, are you looking to get into a band and play drums in a hip-hop band? And I went, hip-hop? I've never played hip-hop before. <laughs> and I went, oh, who are these guys? And so, oh, the band called The Company, they're, they're like a, a, a the next big thing, the up-and-coming thing, you know. And I said, oh, yeah, pass on the details. So John passed on um, Josh's number. So then Josh and I started texting for a few days. And um, Josh being Josh, next best thing worldwide, yeah, we're going to be <laughs> massive. Um, yep. Sounds yeah, about you're not, right. You're nodding, Josh. You you, you know. <laughs> Twenty five. <laughs> and Josh sent me the link to the to the album as well. It was a, I think it was, I think you sent me the link or you sent me the MP3s or something. Anyway, it's like you, Huey. So I listened to the music and I went, "Wow, this is fucking awesome. Yeah. This is really cool music." And and I can see myself playing along to this stuff. Like I can, I don't know. It just sort of had a feel that I was kind of into at the time. And it was a different sort of hip hop, I suppose, than the hip hop that I had in my head. Same with me. Um, yeah. So it was, yeah, it was, I think maybe that corn sort of vibe, like Ronnie just said, you know, it was just kind of had, I could add something a little bit more, um, I don't know, gutsy to it or whatever. So I said to Josh, yeah, look, I'm, I'm keen. So let's, um, let's meet up. So Josh goes, all right, well, the, the boys are, the boys are recording a music video in the rocks. So no. come in and come and meet meet us and we'll um yeah. we'll hang out. And little did I know it was fucking vivid. 
So it took three hours to get a car park. But anyway, I met Josh out the front of um, Starbucks on, uh, I think it was Starbucks, eh, Josh? Is that the name of the... Yeah, bro, it was. It was, it was one of the. What, yeah, it was Starbucks in, in, uh, yeah. in Circular Quay. And um, I, I don't know if he knew who I was, but I'd seen photos of him. And um, so anyway, yeah, we just we started chatting and walking and, and then we met up and met um, Rondo and... and uh, Gino recording this music video. Now I can't remember what the video was for. Do you remember what the? And we ended up oh, at one at one stage there. We're on. We were, shit, we're in some we of the backs. Yeah, yeah. It's just was a it song on? we had made, and someone wanted to shoot a video for it. So we're like, yeah, yep. Yeah. And I just remember a few of the scenes. There's one scene there. We're walking down when you guys were walking down some stairs, the back of the rocks, and and then there was that outside the front of that pub on George Street. I can't remember what the name of the pub was now, but you did that slow motion scene. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you remember that? Do you remember recording remember that? that? Yeah. And I remember just like leaning against the wall, just watching this stuff going, oh, this is cool. This is awesome. <laughs> and that was on the Friday night. And then, uh, yeah, we chatted for a bit and then walked around town for a little bit, just talking about stuff. And and then we had that first, the first official band meeting, I suppose, on the on that Sunday. Oh, wow. and, and it was actually – Correction there, Martin wasn't walking in when I was there. He was actually walking out. <laughs> <laughs> so I like passed him in the driveway. And I went, hey, bro, yeah, you know, shook hands and he was like marching out. Right? And I had no idea who this, who this guy was. <laughs> Maybe he just got the sack. I don't know. Yeah, because by that stage, like who he said, it was it was the worldwide news that Stevie Taylor had joined the company, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then we yeah we had that meeting, and yeah, like like we said earlier, my wife had made the, the beautiful food, and we sat around. Lovely, and beautiful. Josh put the hammer down and said, "There's a contract coming that you have to sign. To sign away <laughs> like, your can right." Can we just can we just clarify something though, very Like you just always used to get me to do the hard stuff. Like you go, oh Josh, because because you're quite heartless. You go, you go tell him that he needs. To, or I had to be the one to tell Martin as well. Like you do it, bro. You're good at doing stuff like that. It's like that's not that's not nice. Yeah, but sorry, bro. You're good at doing. You're a manager. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I was getting really really excited because I like I liked the music and I and it was like for me too I I hadn't I you know having lived in Australia a long time there's been different different parts of my life while I'm here where I've I've been hanging around with a lot of Kiwis and then for some reason they go they go back to New Zealand or you know but for me meeting up with you guys that first time was another group of Kiwis together and I just instantly felt like I was at home, you know what I mean? And it was like, I just felt like I knew you from that first Sunday, you know, like that, that you know, when we broke bread together and talked and that sort of stuff. And then, um, yeah, and then we, I don't know exactly what happened after that, but I remember our first our first um, yes. rehearsal and it was in that that studio in, um, in the back of Blacktown. Yeah. And, yeah. and what I remember about that <laughs> that place was the floors, do you remember the floors? Like really thin, like timber. So you stand on it, and the whole floor like move like this. And I and as a as a drummer, that's particularly difficult when you're setting your drums up and you've got your left and your right foot going, and the floors moving. <laughs> so that's what I remember. But I think we took a bunch of photos that that day too. And they're they're on our um, pretty sure they're on our Facebook page. Those original. Yeah, yeah, original yeah, jam photos. Yeah, yeah. They were standing light. against the wall. The and... light. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Um, so, Stevie, what's um, what happened when you when you came in? Were we preparing? Like the company ball had already been released, right? Yeah. It had, it? it had. Yeah, yeah. you just were preparing for to to take it out as a live show, just to record yeah. to play them live as a band. Yeah. You know, as a sort of a permanent band. Permanent band, yeah. Yeah, not not just sort of. You know, yeah, like a jam band, and and that that was how it was kind of um, sort of put to me, and and I was all in, man. Once we started jamming, once I'd heard who you start playing, we just we just clicked straight away, didn't we, yeah. bro? We just um, you know, and and yeah, and I can say this, and I've said this to you before. I I, I don't think I've I've clicked or linked as much with a bass player even up till now than I have with up to that point, and then up yeah. till now than I had with Hui's. I think we've just got a man. I know, just got a. Yeah, co- I don't want to be all cliche and g- connection and groove or whatever, but 
I know you just it just always feels right and good when we play together. So I just um, you know, who knows? It may have been a different situation if it wasn't who he's playing playing bass because because it, it allowed us to be able to be creative, creative yeah. and you guys were really really open to our creativity and our takes on your songs. Yeah, I, I don't remember there being hardly any pushback on the stuff. Like I mean, because who we not who is and I did our best to um, represent those songs to the album the best that we could. But when we, when it was an opportunity to sort of add our creative flavour to it, there was never, I don't remember there being any pushback, except when Josh wanted to play the drums. <laughs> <laughs> well, I still think I should have been allowed. I've uh, been one of the founding members. It wasn't much I was asking. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't a, weren't enough stickers to put on the drums, yeah. <laughs> and you know what? It, what excited me too was like you know, knowing that it was only going to be a, a five piece band. Um, there's only certain sound, like there's a lot of a lot of sounds and and samples and stuff on that album that we wanted to recreate. Oh. Um, what I got excited about was the opportunity to be able to take portions of that. And make them into backing tracks, which we did, and being able to run those tracks and playing along to a click, you know, because that's what we did, didn't we? We, we, yeah, yeah. Um, we were quite thankful that you were able to do that, eh? Like, um, mm-hmm. take all those because, yeah, there's a lot of sounds and different elements in a lot of those songs. Yeah, you guys just sent me like the raw stems of the of the of the album, the album audio, and then from whatever form we'd decided in the rehearsal that we were going to make the song, then I was able to, you know, put my producer's hat on and or mix yeah. his hat. A lot of the feedback that we got back to, mm-hmm. bro, was our, our our live performance was better than our than the album, like than hearing the album. A lot of people told me that anyway. And I, I, I think that's because mm-hmm. you and Huiz were able to do what you were able to do. I think that's what made it so the live mm-hmm. so much better. Yeah. I tell you what, do you yeah. remember Jay Every Jones? You remember? Yeah, 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 Jay, yep. yeah. Well, I remember when um, uh, when he got hold of the album, and I remember I was just about getting text messages every day because him and I were truck drivers back then. So I was just about getting you know messages every day, like, "Oh, I love this album. I love these songs." Blah blah blah. And he just yeah, he pretty much just thrashed it every day. Every day until we, um, when he come to, um, I think the first gig he came to was when we played in Blacktown, uh, down in the basement thing. At the basement, yeah. it was called. Cool. Yep. And mm. I remember um, him approaching me afterwards, and um, and I think I think he was with um, Mandy. Do you remember Mandy? <laughs> yeah, uh, he was. I think yeah. she had been listening to the the album as well. And I remember them approaching me and saying, well, you know, like our approach to the songs, you know, um, even with the, you know, um, the little um, added like bridges and whatnot that we put in there on the songs and whatnot. But, um, beep, beep, yeah, they, beep. they definitely loved um, the live show, you know, the, the live, um, yeah, the, yeah, just the, the live way of us, doing the songs, you know, and, you know, and even being on stage was, yeah, it was a good warm feeling as well, you know, and, and I think at that point too, you know, I, I kind of felt too that it ended up being, even though I wasn't um, one of the originals that was on the album, at that point it, it started to really feel that, yeah, no, I'm like, this is mine, you know, yeah, and, and yeah, that's what was good about it. But yeah, no, yeah, definitely good feedback back in those days. Do you, um like we're we're, pro- we're probably all going to have different um timelines of our memory, but when we released the album, uh, we had uh, two bucks on there, and it was we we solely made it as kind of an interlude between two songs, and it was you've obviously heard it, but for those that haven't, it was kind of done in the form of a garage and a party. It was just an acoustic like four guys are sitting around in a garage and we kind of strum it out and we do some harmonies on it. That was the original two bucks. And we got our albums, we got our album done and we got the boxes sent out and we we're selling the albums. You know, the, a few of them got sort of, people were getting to two bucks and coming back to us and going, 
the album's pretty cool and we really like two bucks, but we don't like the fact that it's just a, a, a little interlude. Kind of, it wasn't negative feedback, bro, but it was more like a disappointed feedback, you know, like, where's the rest of the song? It was never really intended to be a full song. And I took the, I took that pretty hard because, you know, this music, you know, it's coming from your mind or our, our heads. So I, I, was, I was getting a lot of it, bro. Like a lot of people were saying it to me and it was, was kind of starting to sort of get to me a bit. So I remember doing up, um, doing up the demo. I, I think... My re- recollection too is this: this was actually, I think it might have been Joshua's idea. Two bucks was his actual idea, and I just developed it into the the kind of song, which is where I was talking about earlier, where he sort of comes up with these sort of crazy ideas, and I just sort of develop it into a song. So I went away with his idea and the, the song we had made, which was a little skit, and I turned it into kind of like a demo. Really budget bass, simple bass, simple drums, and I sent it off to um, New Zealand on their funding. And I remember getting a back, man, because I had put in songs for funding prior to that, maybe seven months mm-hmm. prior to that. So I was putting in different songs and different songs and even two bucks. Hang on, hang on, bro. Getting- before, before you carry on, just explain to the listeners <laughs> yep. the whole the, the whole concept of the, the New Zealand funding. New Zealand On Air? Yeah, yeah. yeah so New Zealand On Air, bro, is um, New Zealand On Air, a music funding agency, and they give X amount of dollars to X amount of bands every month. And a lot of that money and a lot of the funding goes to the the highly emerging bands, like the ones that are already established. And then they have a little bit a little bit there for the up and coming bands. And everyone puts it in. You know, every everyone that tries music puts in some sort of application. So you're looking at thousands probably every month. Well, this particular month, I put in two bucks. I put in the demo, and we got it, man. I got the email back saying you 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 know, um, New Zealand on air like the song. They they feel that there's a market for the song. Uh, we like the angle of it, uh, you know. We, we're willing to fund it, and obviously, uh, you know, I let I let the boys know because at the stage, I think it was just us, just the three of us at that stage that were sort of in there. And um, oh, it's buzzing, bro. No, no, so, we, we, me and who's oh, we, we were all there. What was my, your um? My recollection much, of yeah, my yep. I, I didn't I had no idea you'd put it in, I, and I didn't yep. know of any of the negative feedback. What I remember specifically from that night. Was that was the first night I left the band? That was the first time. <laughs> <laughs> but I hadn't actually told you yet. I was about to because I think oh, we'd been because you know like some of our messenger conversations yeah. they got pretty fucking heated sometimes, eh? And it was just like, <laughs> or the organ or something couldn't be organised or whatever. <laughs> and this one, yeah, or the yeah, that's it. So that Gino's worst, putting a thumb up. Time. So we've got this, and I've still got this too. Like, you know, you, you'd write this three hundred word. <laughs> Um, essay of how you're feeling, right? And all you get back was the thumb emoji, right? So, <laughs> so that became a thing in this band that, you, like, that's like that's like basically saying, get Swearing fuck, it, yeah, get fuck, yeah, yeah, get yeah. fuck off. If you put a thumb up, it's like, ah, uh, you're nah, not interested. Anyway, so anyway, th- I think that had happened that night, and I I was about to write a message saying I'm fucking done, boys. Then then Rondo puts the message on saying, boys, we got funding, and I'm like. Fuck it, let's go. <laughs> it like, I'm back. I'm back, baby. <laughs> so, babe, how much did we get? The funding was uh, 12000 so I think eight. I can't remember the, the split, but it was like 8000 for video and 4000 for the recording or, or some yeah, sort of variation. Versa, right? Something like that. Yeah. We had to pay our own way back to New Zealand. Right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 Is that yours, Josh? Is that your kind of uh, recollection of the uh, events of two bucks, like the, that sort of thing? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's my recollection of two bucks. Exactly that. Actually, that's how, how it worked. But I thought, um, I thought you only just said that that one two bucks song that we got on the album. And on what I did just quickly on the album, what I liked is that we had a theme to the album. Like there was a the company ball it was yeah, about us yeah. getting to the company ball. You know, we we really mm. put that through through the album but when you put two bucks in there I was like oh it doesn't really fit bro like oh oh I see what you're nah, trying to do okay nah. it's an interlude you try to link it into another song so there was a whole theme throughout that whole album from the start to the end it was just a, it was like a story which is what I liked about it but no no that's um that's my recollection of two bucks bro that's how it went for me as well and I remember you you tried to ring me a couple of times and I was at work 
And I was like, bro, I'm at, I'm at work. I'll, I'll talk to you later. And you're like, bro, talk to me now. I was like, what? You're like, you talk to me now, boy. And I was like, oh, okay, what's up? <laughs> 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 we, got, we got, that was one of our many arguments. Was, we got funding. And I was like, oh, funding for what? And then you was like, bro, we got funding to go back to music. Wait, this is it, bro. We've made it. And I'm like, bro, I'm, I'm yeah. trying to figure out these Excel spreadsheets at work, bro. I'm, I haven't got time right now, and I think, <laughs> yeah, we, we got, a bit, got a bit angry. And you're like, oh, you're not committed, boy. Just, just I'm the only one that's committed to the band. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how I remember. But I was excited. I was excited. Hey, Stevie, do you, do, you remember, do you remember hearing Ronnie's demo of Two Bucks and it had like a, a four-handed drummer on it? <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think so. I, I've I've got it somewhere. Yeah. After this, I'm going to go back. Yeah, and you should do. It. Yeah, that's right. It was like yeah, the four handed drummer with the with the eight eight feet. Oh, yeah. Eight yeah. feet. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what won them over, bro. Was yeah, like they got, a, they got an awesome drummer in the band. <laughs> drummer. <laughs> but yeah, I just remember remember from that point once I I brought myself back to the band. Um. <laughs> Uh, I just remember starting to think about because you know my mind and hang on, I, let me. I got to say this too, right? So, joining a band with with these four fellas, um, I I had to pretty quickly take the role as um, organisational manager because <laughs> like herding fucking cats sometimes. <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? You're, lo- you're all laughing because you know I'm yeah. right there. Um, Oh, that's right. But yeah, right. so my mind, my mind started going to okay. Well, it was okay. So we asked. So we've got this funding, and it's in New Zealand. So currently, we're we were all in Sydney. It's like all right. So we've got to get to, we've got to get to New Zealand to do this. And they actually asked for us to put towards it too, didn't they, Rondo? Oh, that's about two thousand eh? Yeah. Something. Yeah, we had to put it. We had to. We had to put money forward. So it was like. All right, so we've got to somehow make some some money, and that's when the idea came to do like a crowd crowdfunding yeah, campaign, yeah, and yeah, and yeah. that crowdfunding was fairly new, wasn't it? Yeah. Back yeah. then, so you know, so we we did things like mowing, you know, cleaning up yards and giving bass that's lessons right. and guitar yeah. lessons and selling the album and, and and the birthday song. Remember all the birthday songs we did? Yeah, yeah, like for fifty bucks, you got. Birthday song and like we all had a crack at it. We all had different. Yeah. Yeah. Baker, Baker, Corey Baker. <laughs> remember that one, Josh? It's all yeah, I remember. I remember <laughs> moving your brother's house. Yeah, my brother. yeah. No, that was mum and dad's. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. We had to move my brother's house. Then we cleaned up yeah. my mum and dad's whole backyard. Remember? Yeah. Yep. And then Josh. Um, Remember we did my cousin's name's Carl. <laughs> oh, yeah. My cousin's name's Carl. We'll be on speed, Carl. And I need some cash. Oh. Oh, was that all for two and bucks? Jamie Dicker. Like, oh, yeah, what, and what about, 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 about the Hemi Clayton one? In the in the style of uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, remember? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. In the bathroom, was it? The bathroom <laughs> yeah. one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, classic. <laughs> um, but, yes, okay, so we ended up. It, you know, and we had heaps of campaigns too, didn't we? We we oh. had all sorts of online stuff of making the money, and we ended up we ended up doing it. We ended up funding it, funding the airfares and the accommodation and the car hire and like all that stuff. Yeah, just you on you being organised. I think that's really the important part of bands. Like everyone brings something different, Stevie. But like obviously, Gino, uh, Ronnie, and myself had a real big drive. You had a good drive as well. So did. But it is, it's really important to have that guy that organizes stuff and that brings things together, like realistically. Like you can have all these great big creative ideas, but sometimes you need that guy just to go, nah, hang on, guys. Like this is how we've got to channel it. It's great to have these creative ideas, but channel it this way. Get yourselves organized. You've got to be there. And I remember. Like a few times, I'd be like, "Man, this guy's like the Gestapo man. Like he's, like, I'm trying to be free and creative." Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Look, I remember, I remember outside one of our rehearsals one day, you actually, I think all of you might have come up to me and goes, "Bro, you've got to, you got to tone it down. <laughs> like you, you're too, you're too full on. Like we can't keep up with it. You know, look, it's too much. Just tone it down with all the organising." And I'm like, I think our, our philosophy was, bro, it'll be sweet as. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so it was. Did you find that oh, hard? Mate, I'll tell you what. It was did such you find a, that hard, Stevie? Like being so organised and yeah, coming into a group of Māoris that just like, it'll be all good, bro. It'll work out. It'll work out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did. Yeah, I learned I learnt a lot of uh, valuable uh, life lessons. <sighs> No, nah, but anyway, let, yeah, let's talk about the that that trip then. So we, you know, we ended up. Um, I think the first thing we had to do was was shop around for a producer, right? And Rondo, I think you you hit up Tikitano first, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. he just yeah, right. he just come off the back of the six sixty album. Yeah, that's right, six sixty. Yep. And I can't. I think it was along the lines of the unavailability with him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 because of that, and uh, of that, I, think he yeah. the name, but, I think he was into. The, I think the the response was it's a good song, but I just you know you're doing six sixty, they're emerging. I think they got funding as well. Yeah, so just just to sort of let everyone know, like that's the level of people that we had been competing with, and we're currently sitting right alongside. You know, they got the funding as well. Mm. So I can't. I I, I actually think he might have. He, contact, I, I don't he contacted us. Sure. Yeah, 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 and then obviously. Um, who, who, what was the name of the uh, who you in? Chris Chetland Cog? from Cog, yeah, Cog, Cog Studios. Cog, yeah. Yep, Cog reached out and um, reached out and said, "Yeah, we." Because he was at Chris was actually on the on the funding board, the panel, the panel for and it. he yeah, really he, lo- loved the song. Yeah, and I think that's that's what he. Yeah, he he uh, he said, "Look, you know, I I I can do something with the song with you guys." And it was it was good too, bro. Because he. Even though he was on the funding board, it wasn't as if he was using us to get himself money because he didn't he didn't really follow up like that. He didn't come. Oh, you know, I've, I pushed for the funding, so can I? It wasn't like that. It's just a coincidence. It's just a coincidence. It turned out because we had. Oh, I have a to year like earlier. yeah, a year earlier, we got nominated. So we've probably jumped a little bit, but we'll, we'll quickly jump back. We got nominated for a music award. Was it best hip hop album, Josh? Or? Yeah. Was it? Yeah, and best got nominated for a musical coming artist or something like that as well. Yeah, so we're alongside uh, Tiki Tane was one. Uh, there was another young Stan Walker, uh, up and coming. Yeah, Stan Walker, and then there was also uh, Wake, Wake, yeah, Wake. So, and then we just happened to, uh, and the other person in our category was Huya, Huya Hammond. So we sort of got to know them from that point. Uh, we didn't know who they were. They didn't know who we were all the way through this whole process. Yeah. But just coming back to that, which is probably a big thing that we skipped, is that we actually got nominated was, for an award through that time yeah. as well. But at that award, what happened was there was like a, a pregnant lady, eh, sitting in front of us mm. with her husband, oh. and then they went off in the break, and then they come back, and someone had stolen their chairs. We are like, hey, oh, sorry mm. about that. And it turns out it was Chris and who here. Yeah. Like, like yeah, the next year when we met them officially, they actually won the oh the the category that we were nominated in. Yeah, so it's just a funny way how things came out. Yeah, there was probably a year year before. Yeah, about yeah, a, year about a year before. before. So you know, I mean, we did jump across that, which is actually a big achievement in itself. So you can sort of add that into the the path that we felt like we were sort of rising on, and then we go ahead. You know, we've got awards, we've got a band now, uh, talented musicians, and we've got this bloody. Funding from New Zealand on air, everything was going good, man. And then one thing uh, that when we were at that music awards, because we we're from Aussie, eh? mm. they all thought we were power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they sort of they you mistake us power? for power. Oh, yeah. yeah, we are. <laughs> no. well, yeah, yeah. That's a whole other story in itself because yeah. we we're actually really good mates with Jay, the lead singer of Power. So that's that's a whole other story again. But we we've raised that story with him a couple of times. But um, yeah, just as things turned out. The person that vouched for our song, um, we actually knew them kind of in a roundabout way a year before that at the Music Awards, and then uh, bumped in, you know, sort of made contact with them weeks later after we got announced for that uh, funding, man. So it was, just, it was kind of like things were just falling into place, like the people were coming into the right spots and things were falling into place. And But I, I just want to ask, man, how did you – because I made the demo – well, so we made the demo, but I kind of, you know, I, I sort of dodged up the, the eight-arm drummer and I threw on just a random bass one. How much of the um, demo did you kind of take for your own music, bass-wise and drum-wise and, and even keyboards? Did you take any of it or did you just wipe it out nah. and just go with your own sort of? Nah, start it again. No, <laughs> <laughs> didn't like the eight, didn't no like I'm the joking. No, drum. no, no, no. I, I'm, I'm, I think we probably, like the, the, the groove of it, 
me and who are you? you we did our own thing with that yeah we we sort of made the the bass and the drums our own sort of thing um but because you kind of put it put that breakdown in there that sort of pre-chorus breakdown sort mm. of thing mm. but and yeah, i kind of heard i kind of heard uh almost an afro-cuban sort of yeah. thing to that straight away right off the bat the first time i heard it and that's where we that's where we went with that breakdown the sort of reggae yeah. sort of yeah, it took me a couple of weeks to get my head around the eight eight arm drummer, bro. So just trying to <laughs> suss that. <laughs> we did spend a lot of time workshopping that song. We, like we had lots of rehearsals because it was all about that one song at that stage. Yeah, we didn't have any gigs or anything. I don't. Yeah, okay. Hmm. So when we were in the studio, who is? Did you um you'd already figured out the bass line you're going to run, eh? Uh yeah, pretty much. Like my, my baseline or my idea to the baseline to what it is now, I pretty much went off uh, Nisian Mystic's um, Sun Goes Down. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. We, because of the chord progression, it, it was similar and whatnot. I thought, well, um, I made that at my starting point. And then, it, yeah, I, I guess it was where there was the phrasing of a lyric. And whatnot, and all that is where it, it um, yeah. So I, I knew I had to take it away from that Nisian Mystic. I, I didn't want to sound like the baseline from Nisian Mystic, of course. And then I, I still wanted to try and keep my rockish kind of feel to it as well. I mean, I thought with my role being the bass player in the company, it was like, yeah, I, I want to put my feel into the songs, not, not me having to put a feel that I, I wouldn't be comfortable with, if you know what I mean. Mm. So, um, yeah, but the Nisha Mystic um, progression, I, I kind of started off with that. And then, and then yeah, I started feeling and hearing and seeing um, um, yeah, phrases and whatnot and all that. So, and that's kind of what I come up with. And, uh, it, yeah, it actually wasn't until we were, we were there, and in the studio, and I remember when we were all kind of um, in a circle, kind of rehearsing and whatnot. And I thought, well, <coughs> oh, in that other yeah, room, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. I thought, well, you know, I'm, you know, I kind of got to just stick with a, a, a structure. And um, and it wasn't until Stevie and I were in that room together, and then and then we, yeah, because we tracked we tracked yeah, it live yeah, together. We did, and and yeah. that's when him yep. and I. You know, you and I started bouncing off each other pretty much. You know, what are you do, doing here kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess the idea of it was there, but the, the, the manifestation of that, you know, just happened in that room. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it all happened in mm-hmm. that room. Like um, uh, like in the verses and whatnot, I, t- I actually play two different phrasings of, I don't know if you guys even noticed. Yeah, I no. did, bro. Like, oh, yeah, of course like, we did. Two I different did. phrases yeah, I played there. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> like uh, on Ronnie's um, verse and Josh's verse, the, the bass lines are, are not the same. But then I incorporated both those um, phrasings, whatnot, within the whole song. And 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 originally it was well yeah I'm going to play this on Ronnie's and then I'm going to play this on Josh's, but then it ended up being well well hang on a minute, I'll just intertwine it all you know, and and that's kind of how how I did it with that one, but you know I, I, as long as you play with conviction well yes <laughs> yeah. conviction matters, but um oh. I, I I guess when you're under that pressure and whatnot you know that that's when your your mind starts really 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 going for it, you know, and you're like, well, you know, you, you want to put something down where, where, um, you know, it's good to listen to and, you know, it, it'll just attract, you know, <clears throat> that's what it's all about though, you know, you know, once you hear a good song, whether it's a hook, bass line, anything and whatnot, yeah, if it attracts you and whatnot, you'll get led to it and you get pushed into that song. So um, that, that was my thought, my initial thought, um, you know, um, when Stevie and I were in that room. 
you know, and it was a matter of me just playing my baseline, but then just looking at what he was playing, his accents and whatnot, you know, as well. And even though, um, you know, like the, the guitar and the vocals come afterwards, I still had a, a fair idea of, you know, the lyrics, um, you know, how it went, the phrasings and whatnot. Um, yeah, I, I guess too, with it being such a basic chord structure, progression, you know, kind of thing, it um, it kind of made it a bit, bit easier. You know, but even that... Um, you know, the, the pre-chorus and even the bridge, you know, even I thought, you yeah, know, work on that. And actually, um, what what I actually did do on the bass line on that, um, and, and when we kind of played it live and all of that, I thought, oh, oh what have I gone and done? You know, trying to mimic what I'm playing <laughs> in the studio and then doing it kind of live, I'm like, oh, I'm kind of, you know, all over the place. Um, because... With my bass line and whatnot, with Stevie's drum line, I'm I'm con- constantly just my fingers are going ding ding ding, ding and it's just ding, ding, yeah, ding, just ding, going. Ding, my, ding, my fingers ding, are just ding, like ding, this yeah. right through the whole song, and I thought, oh, what have I done? <laughs> and yeah. they're, they're big fingers yeah. too, <laughs> mind string yeah, bass, but um, yeah, whatnot. Oh yeah, I, I I guess you know a lot of people work a lot better when they're under pressure, and I I, I felt that way. You know, being that we're back home and doing it as well. So, um, yeah. Because we um, did the vocal to Tirangi, and then we tracked all the instruments in Revolver, right? Yeah, mm. that's right. Yeah. But Re- Re- Revolver was the first day. Yeah. And, and uh, okay, well, let's tell a story about that. So we, we came back from that recording session of the, the bass, the drums, <laughs> and the guitar, Um. And we had a rather big night, didn't we, boys? Mm. Yep. <laughs> um, a few of us um, went to bed relatively early, and a couple of yous uh, went out. <laughs> so anyway, the, the next the next morning, we're getting. Well, it was a real hard time getting a couple of these guys um, out of bed, banging on the door and trying to get them up and into the van. But anyway, we get up there. Rondo <laughs> comes out. <sighs> <laughs> oh, voice, my voice, my voice, my voice. I'm out. I'm out. I can't do it. Wasn't that Josh? I'm sure it was. No, Josh. it was you, man. It was you. And then I think you even went. I think you went. You went out by yourself. I don't know if you had the shits. You had. You went out to regather yourself or to get some cough lollies no, or something. Some honey, your throat, but ginger, some honey. Do you think that'll work, bro? If I have ginger and honey. Um, so I was afraid to order, like afraid to order different people to help him. Yeah, bro. Yeah, no, that was really awesome. Stevie, remember we had, it was you, me and Huya in that one room, like at the hotel, motel or whatever it was. Remember, like, Huya was asleep? <laughs> oh, we thought he and was we dead. we were, like, walking, and then we're like, because Huya stopped yeah, breathing. Huya is quite a loud... Who he is quite a loud breathing sleeper. <laughs> so yeah, loud breathing. We'd get this. It was like this. So it would be like that, but then a couple of times, eh, jeans, it got a bit too long. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> me and Gina were like, Oh, straight up, we ran over to him to see if we thought he'd stop breathing. We thought he was going to his nose for going yeah, yeah. his nose. <laughs> and then it'll be like, it'll be silence, and then. <laughs> and then, and then, and then. Because <laughs> of all the powers he'd had for dinner. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Oh, classic. Oh, that was a good time. That was a good yeah, time. Yeah, it was. It was. And so we yeah. recorded the. The song, yeah. No, we then had to like shoot the music video. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That was after, a after another before. big night. That was yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Rachel. That was good too because it was like a real proper felt like a proper production outside of what me and Josh had done up until that point, where it was just the bros and a couple of the, the brothers with the extras. It was like a whole crew had lighting, catering tables, and everything. So it was even for us, we had sort of been through a bit. It was like, whoa, this is. Big man, this is me. Look at this. Yeah, that was exciting that day. Remember, um, I just wanted to. Uh, people can't probably see this, but the key we hit this version number one hundred and fifty-one. We are on the disc, so that song actually made it onto the key we hit this, which is a 
compilation of kind of all the the top emerging the artists through the country. You got Scribe and well, pretty much all the top artists. So and two bucks got on there. Yeah, company super over here. So we, we actually we made it onto two Kiwi hit discs, but this one in particular, uh, Kiwi hit disc one fifty one. Uh, we were on there alongside Deech, who was with the Decepticons. I think Spawn Breezy, Savage, Jim oh, Wigmore, yeah. She Had. So we're talking high level artists on a high level compilation CD, and we're on it. So um, it didn't. The, the video got a bit of rotation too on some yeah, of them. Yeah, man. One, one yeah, thing so- I one thing I, I reckon, man, is why it didn't get as big as it should have. Is I like I know a lot of Kiwi uh, Kiwi fans really like to see bands play to really uh, like form that sort of relationship with the band. And because we lived in Sydney, we were never really given the opportunity to sort of really sort of stretch ourselves further in New Zealand. And I kind of think that, you know, the, the music video was on TV there. The song was playing on radio. We're on the Kiwi hits disc, but we couldn't be there to, yeah. for people to see who are these, like who are these people? <laughs> and I think that's why I kind of arose and it, it fell, it fell as probably as it did because we just couldn't bloody push it, man. So it is what it is, you know, whatever. But we, we've still got it. It's, it's still ours. That's right. Still I'm proud still of it. Yeah. And know. even when we're 80, we'll still be talking about it. So Yeah, I yeah, used to get yeah. our messages like, oh, I just heard your song in Briscoe's. <laughs> um, so, yeah, okay. So we, yeah, we didn't sort of get the traction we wanted coming back from that. But so what we did end up doing once we got back here was um, we kept, we kept making music. Yeah. And I think the next, the next song we did was "Shoot Baby," wasn't it? Yeah, yep. That was yep. the next song we did together as a as a band. Yeah. Um, and I think that was the first song. I think we all yeah. collaborated as a new so- as a new song because up to that point we'd you know met Huey's and I had you know learnt the album and we'd been playing the company ball music and then you know we did this new version of two bucks which was already already an original idea but shoot baby was the first um yeah ba- the song we did together and built up uh, as a band and um yeah i same i remember those i remember those rehearsal sessions like working that song up getting it to the point that it was and then and um, that's we got kiwi hit disc 159 we're also on that as well so that song that we wrote as a uh Shoot a group, baby. yeah, shoot, baby. Also got featured on this compilation. Did it really? Oh, I didn't yeah, know man. that. Oh, yeah. not to be, not to be confused. Was actually shooting babies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was uh, uh, one fifty one was two bucks, and then uh, one fifty nine was uh, shoot, baby. And alongside some big, big artists there too, man, Peter T, uh, Tyree, there's heaps of them, man. So that was our first foray into like us, and it, yeah, they got the got the big feature there too, man. So. And that was our kind of, our, like you said, Stevie, that was our first time kind of collaborating in the writing and producing um, as a band, eh? Like someone would come, I think Josh came up with the idea, the kind of hook, mm. and I made the guitar part and then sent to you for the drums, who yeah. had the bass. So yeah. it, was actually, it was actually quite good being able to collaborate together like that. Yeah, because a lot of us got to actually be together in the different, parts of the recording process because I think um like I recorded the drums at Nut and Butter Studio and I think yeah, yeah, yeah. Nut and Butter yeah, Nut and was Butter. I out there was I, I think I might have been on that session by myself for that for that I one. Think I think I might have been yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think I came with yeah. you. Oh okay yeah, it was yeah. the two of us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the yeah. two of us for that. Yeah. And then I think well, oh, while we were there, didn't I record a couple other songs, live versions of I think you did Live by the Rules maybe Live or? by the Rules, yeah, yeah. Maybe um, like just a yeah, to, to some up. while I, while while we because I think we'd blocked out four hours of his time or whatever, and, and um, you smashed out shoot baby, and then we had nothing time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At, well, at that very point, at that moment, I thought, man, we like we're, we're featuring on another Kiwi hits disc yeah. alongside New Zealand's best. Like we things at that point, we we were pretty we we're doing all right, man. Like we we're, we're almost back to back single back to back songs or probably singles featured on the. Top compilation disc in the whole of the country, man. So back to back singles, but that's pretty, pretty good. Uh, pretty good. Yeah, and I think yeah, going back to what you said, Rondo. I think the fact that we were here in Australia and the traction that we did get was in New Zealand, and we weren't yeah. there to to yeah. to play live to tour it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it is what it is. And then um, 
What was the next one we did? We did a couple, I think we did um, Devil in Disguise oh. and then Back Row. Yeah, back Row was first, was yeah, Back Row. I can't remember. No, back row was the last one because that's still that's still our uh, profile picture on our um, <laughs> on what on our Facebook page. Uh, uh, new single, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, new single, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, De- Devil in Disguise. That was a different recording process, wasn't it? I think we all we. I don't think. I think we just sent each other stuff and then just stuff yeah. we did, yeah, and then it was all electronic, like the, over yeah, the uh, and- Josh and. Her, Josh and Huey's came here to record their parts and yeah. um yeah, it was just at that stage it's getting sort of uh not dysfunctional, that's not the word I'm looking for, but it's not disjointed. We're not as connect we're not as connected yeah, as because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. we're not in the same space and I think that's just what what's eventually happened we in to Sydney? us. I don't think we yeah, I think we're still in Sydney at that stage, yeah. But yeah. but even so we, we we weren't getting together to Yeah. To I love um, Josh's um, devil in disguise. He's got that really raspy, like yeah. That so, um, when you hear it without the music, it's just like oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, oh. No, I like that. I like that. I love it. I like it. Oh yeah, yeah. But you know, look, we've got we've got so many stories that we can tell and. But you know, let's let's talk a little bit about now where we sort of are now, and yeah, the, like, I guess I said it earlier about we've we've tried at, at least four or five times a year to say we're going to do something else, but we we for some reason we don't end up doing it because we're all we're all fairly busy these days. But yeah, I think it also comes back to the fact that we five of us can't be in a room together mm. um, to be creative, and that that makes it that makes it difficult. Yeah, I, think. I think that's it. Well, look, I. Oh. Mm. I'll go first on that matter because uh, I got actually got some bros turning up. I don't know if you can see it. We got a we got a jam. Twenty nine yep. pedals ready to yeah. set up. Stop <laughs> setting your pedals up, bro. They Let's started that last night. Up, <laughs> last yeah, night, yeah, I just yeah. made me a new pedal board <laughs> just this morning. Set up yesterday. Oh. Started that yesterday. <laughs> Hang on, let me. Okay, before you go, who? Okay, let me expand on that then. So. Our um, the more we sort of played live, I kind of got the feeling that Hui's was getting a little bit jealous of all the gear <laughs> and the electronics and stuff that I had going on, right? So, so I had a you know I had the you know the all the tracks that I'd put together on the on the um on the back track player on the tracks player. I also had a, a SPDS. Rolling. Sampler pad, which I had a whole lot of samples programmed into, which was part of the live sound. And I think, oh, who is there? Started getting a bit jealous, so he just started adding heaps of pedals. You're, you're on the <laughs> ball there, Stevie. I, I'll have to say, bro, that you, all... were, you were my inspiration. You were my inspiration. <laughs> they're all volume pedals. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And, and it doesn't matter how much I say. Every single pedal that was on that board, I use. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. But it even got to a point too where there wasn't enough room on the stage for you to have a microphone stand. So you got yeah, your own little headset microphone. And remember it, that? And it, my head's so bloody big it couldn't. It, you know, it was like right up at my cheek. It wasn't even in front of my mouth. Oh. And then you, you, you didn't want to ask him what the pedal did because he'd go on the stand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's oh, right. Waiting envelope. <laughs> You know what? I shouldn't have hooked it up. It's on the floor. I should have left it here and showed you. But um, oh, look, you know, I, I, I love my FX pedals. You know, there's no yep, no denying know. that. But um, as far as far as what I'm doing lately, I like ah, uh, you know, um, creative wise, yeah, well, a whole lot of nothing. I guess there's nothing for me to look forward to to be like that. Um, if there's an opportunity, yeah, always. You know. Um, I, I guess what I do is like the rest of you is I listen to music and, you know, and I, you know, there's a lot of good music out there, you know, and um, good inspiration and whatnot. Um, probably practice wise, I don't do as much as I should, um, you know, being, you know, a dad, you know, work and whatnot and all of that. and um, So a lot of family stuff, but like once a month, I try and hook up with these boys, um, you might know a couple of them, uh, Brinesh Dutt, they used to live next door to me. 
Yeah. Um, who you guys yep. jam with at my 40th and Isaac. Oh, so, Sax. Yeah, Sax is uh, still there. Um, and then um, mm-hmm. and then I've got uh, my partner's brother, Peter, who's um, – he actually was in a band back in the days of Sons of Zion, and he played uh, – they were called Jackie Chan. Um, they're on YouTube and around about, you know, when they played up in the, uh, when Sons of Zion played up in the rooftop. I don't know if you yeah. remember that. But, um, yeah, he had a yeah. band back then and um, and he's a good singer. So I, I try and drag him along with this. Um, so we try and, try and meet up once a month and just have a good old jam. If it goes anywhere, sweet. If not, then, hey, you know, we're, 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 we're scratching <coughs> that itch pretty much. Yeah, and this is all all it's about, and um, um, and then I, I actually had um, Reese Reese Tikitani. He come and uh, had a jam with us a couple of times. Well, because he's in a, another oh, band Reece. and whatnot, he's quite committed with that. So, um, yep. so I thought, oh, sweet ass, bro, you know. And then, um, and then I, I basically reached out on Kiwis in Sydney and uh, found this uh, bro sooner. Who's um, yeah? He's more of a funk R and B kind of player, um, but um, and this will be our, our well, my second jam with him, or well, first jam with the yep. other boys, and that's what it's all about. It's just you know, oh, well, with me anyway, it's just scratching that itch, you know. Because yeah, a few years ago, you me you me who is, uh, and Josh, and Isaac, started something yep. up, didn't we? What what was that called? What do we call ourselves? We didn't even have a name. Was it the Tatars? No. Oh. Ta- oh, the Tatars or something. something. Like that. <laughs> no, we didn't have a name. Something, no. something, something. I should know because I'm, I'm always still listening <laughs> to those tracks. Always. Yeah, oh, Are you? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, right. Oh, look up. I just, I just remember, remember Josh, that one rehearsal, we came in and the, with that fucking speaker. <laughs> and every time he'd hit that low B, it would just go brrr. It like <laughs> vibrated. Remember that? It sounded like a washing machine. That low B, they sound like a washing machine. I got rid of my bass rig and I, I didn't have a B. bloody amp, oh, yeah. so I used a <laughs> shitty old. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I didn't know what shitty it was old called. Fifteen yeah. or something was it? And the amp that I, yeah. uh, oh, the amp was like fifty kilos. So, you know, yeah, it was I like a, that a around too. stereo hi-fi amp. Every time it hit the low B, it just went <laughs> burrt. <laughs> yeah. Hey Stevie, yeah. you must be the one that's left the most. Yep. I think I think I, I have. forgot about we we actually had Reese for a little bit too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. when you left, yeah, forgot about that. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't either because I, I was the one that what. had to tell Reese. Oh, bro, uh, yeah, yeah. Stevie wants to come back in the Stevie's band. Uh, oh no, no, sweet ass, sweet ass. Mm. I'm like, oh yeah, bro, yeah, you know how it is. He goes, bro, by all means, bro, you got my support. Oh, sweet ass. Uh, I don't even know why I left that time. <laughs> then you put a Facebook post up and it got crickets. <laughs> <laughs> Most of our Facebook posts. Yeah, got crickets. Right. If you go back and have a look, yeah, I think the biggest the biggest like count we got was like four, <laughs> one hour, something like that. But anyway, mm. I'll put links to all our uh, our huge social mm. media, um, yeah, stuff in the show notes. But uh, check it up, Josh. Got a word for the people? Yeah, I suppose creatively. Like, I'm always trying to stay creative. But, um, yeah, I sort of haven't, man. I, I, I suppose when I get my own space, like when I say own space, like when I'm probably in the shower is probably when I'm most creative. Um, but anything, like I've been doing a lot of video stuff. Um, I'm starting to get back into a lot of video stuff, actually. Um, but nothing really musical. But I am open, man. Like, if the door's still there, I'm, I'm happy to walk through it. I've gone... I've tried a couple of different bands to work with a couple of different guys, different artists, but I don't know. just didn't have the same – I couldn't click the same, so um, it, it never really lasted. But if this was ever to kick off again, I'd be keen. Um, one That's, of my mates in power, Jay, the lead singer, he's been doing some um, – what is that? Oh, solo, yeah, stuff. solo stuff. So I, play, I did a gig with him in a band and – just doing some little bits and pieces there, but yeah, mainly doing video stuff these days. It's my creative outlet. So yeah, but musically, yeah. If, uh, if this 
was to, you know, start up again. It'd be, I think it'd be pretty cool, actually. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I've still got, I've got, I've got terabytes of music of ours sitting in here that's unreleased. But um, like I've been doing some MC, like I've been jumping. I've still, I've still been on the stage lately, which is good, man, because I, I still like getting up on stage. So I'm doing a bit of MC here and there, not heaps, <clears throat> but still working with this dude, man. We're, like we're doing, um, we're like ambassadors for a. Uh, a financing car yard, so we're still doing a lot of content and we're able to continue to do our music, right? Because we do a lot of what is it like music videos, I suppose, eh? We do music videos, man, like full blown music videos, but it's it's just promoting the car yard, so it's not our own music, which sort of sucks, bro, because you feel like you know, it sort of feels like music, but a hand with a handcuff on. Uh, nothing, nothing how we're nothing how we're doing it, but still able to creatively do stuff, but not not. As much not not how I'd like to, bro. Musically, yeah. Yeah, 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 not musically at least. Like, still still creating a lot of content, which is which is the path I've seemed to sort of head down. But musically, it's yeah, what we're doing musically at the moment is not really what I what I'll be doing. But. It's funny with me. Like every six months, it'll be like midnight, and I'll put on like my headphones and the computer, and be, oh, listen to our songs and listen to unreleased songs, mm. and then I'll send a, um, we've got a um a message thread called Poo Talk on Facebook. And I'll be, brothers, every like six months, I'll send the like late night message. One was there. The night. <laughs> yeah, it's just when you have people that you just gel with and just ideas just come and there's no egos or well, some egos, but um, <laughs> I don't, don't want to name it. But, you know, we're, pretty, like, we're, pretty straight, <laughs> we're pretty straightforward when we're like um, – like we're really open eh, to each other's ideas. And I think we've always had a thing where if someone is strongly passionate about something in a song, then we just go with that. Man, let's try it. At least let's try, really let's try it. Eh? That was always the thing. It was always let's, let's try, just try it. it. Let's try it's it. At least give it a go. If we don't like mm -hmm. it, if we do like it, either way, it's all good. You remember that? Remember, Gino, you came, you, you, Came to us one day and said, "Like I've just watched this documentary on um, Lincoln Park. Lincoln Park, yeah. You yeah. watched a documentary or, or, or a YouTube video about their their recording and their creative process, right? Yeah. And what they do is they like they've all got they've all got their different sort of home studios and stuff. But they had this was it called Threads or something like that? They would have a thread, and it would just be like this." little snippet of an idea of a song and then they sort of share it to the group and then that goes into a folder. Yeah. yeah. You remember we did yeah, remember um, we did that? Yeah. 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 So I've still got all that stuff. Oh wow. Man, yeah, all that stuff. I've yeah, got I it in, a, in its own I, hard drive. Mm. How I kind of work is I kind of come up with an idea. It yep. could be like a little idea. And then I give it to Ronnie. Yeah. And he he's just like he's like a magician. He just somehow able to add like a whole song to it mm. yeah it's pretty good that's how i kind of work just i just have one idea and i'm here you go oh. and then and then josh jumps on it then who is mm. and stevie mm. like we actually have a quite a cool process of how we make songs you know yeah yeah that's right yeah <clears throat> it's good yeah man. anyway boys this has been this has been great man not you know not just from the the fact that we, you know, get to record a podcast and share our stories, but just to hang out with you guys again. It's, it's been, been a long a while, time brother. since we've um, mm. been um, just sort of hung out online or whatever together. Oh, it's the, the, five, the five of us. So that's been it's been pretty cool for me. It's been, been a special day. So um, I hope people dig our uh, our uh, little story. Yeah, let's let's see what the future brings. Yo, it's Stevie here. I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you dig the gig life podcast please subscribe share leave a review please follow us on instagram and tiktok you can send me a message if you have an idea for a guest or if you just want to say hello this podcast is free cost you nothing but if you find the value in the gig life podcast you can leave a tip or a donation um, links are in the show notes on your app that's it for me for now catch you next time guys cheers